Hello and welcome back once again to the Rainbow Six Siege Yon Shaping Major. Thank you at home for watching and thank you everybody here at Dreamcast Winter. We are live in Sweden and I cannot believe it. Let me just check my watch. This is flying by. We've already had three quarterfinals completed in two maps apiece. Will the third be a little bit different. I got a feeling that this one could potentially go all the way. Are we ready for our final quarter final on play day one? I think the answer is yes. It's an all NA battle and I'm about to bring both of our teams out onto the stage right now. Rolling onto the big stage for the first time this year with a new blend of youth and experience. Can they reach boss level? It's Sonics! Current world champions finally back on the big stage. When does Bolo play? How about now? It's TSM! You can see both of our teams glancing across the stage into each other's eyes. This NA battle is moments away from commencing, but before it does, let's see these two teams facing off. Being in the playoffs is great, you know, I think it's a long time coming. Um, I think we deserve to be here and I think these teams uh, got to be careful for what we're going to bring. Yeah, I mean, our opponents in the group says that we beat, I think they're very deserved wins, you know. I think those teams are very talented for sure. But I think at, at the end of the day, you know, playing our game, we're definitely a better team. Y'all better be ready because this, this Sonic iteration is going to f*** y'all up. I feel good. I feel good. We, uh, we made it out of groups. Let's not, let's not uh, get a feel about it. We're back in Sweden, back in a major, back in playoffs. That's how it all starts. Looking forward to the end. Whoever you may be, the quarterfinalist versus TSM, hide the meat because I'm coming for it. I'm coming for the meat, boy. I, I appreciate all your guys' support. Um, keep supporting us because we're definitely going to show up for you fans this major. We're back to a major. We got some two new faces, and we're ready to win it. For you, of course, and the SI points that aren't meaningful for us anymore, but for you. And here we are back again at the studio on the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Ian, or, or sorry, Steve, for introducing both of our teams on the stage. We're going to talk details here. Hello, Anne. Hello, Alfama. Welcome back. We still have one more game to go through today. Fancy best of three, and now it's all NA. The top two teams in the region. First, I want to talk about the Sonics. And Alfama, we call you Mr. Worldwide for a reason. because. <laughs> You've been to NA, you've played with even some of the players on the squad, so what can you tell me about them? Well, actually, when we were revamping the EU United roster, uh, Kenton and Rexon were both our first big choice for prospects. Uh, and, and for many reasons, I mean, Richie is an incredible, Rexon is an incredible opener, and Kenton had huge me mechanical skill and would be an amazing anchor. So that's a core roster that has lived uh, up to expectations and beyond 
last year, actually reaching, uh, I think, top eight or top five, six at SI. So it, amazing, right? But then they hit a slump and was the, the roster change took place. And I think the roster change that brought two new players uh, to Sonics was really well thought because super left and retired, right? That's your IGL. Mm -hmm. And then they removed Yeti, who had great shot calling, to bring in a new IGL and new blood that you can mold into the vision of Geo. And I think the roster change like this makes them stronger and closer to the meta too, around Geo, that's the sole core support and then four flexible players with huge fragging skills. In overall, a revamp roster that's looking good. The thing I personally love about this team is when you look at the game that they had against Eminem on the first day, and then a game uh, against Black Dragons, they were able to improve their performance, not only personal performance, but also stress and everything, within four hours difference between those two games. If you're that flexible as a team, that you can come up with these new ideas and these so solutions for problems, then there's a really good future ahead of you. I think indeed, like you mentioned, with those new players, obviously you have to think about two very high influential players leaving. The, the players even mentioned it themselves, these might be the two most inf influential players in the last turn leaving, and that's a big change going into stage three. Then still being able to qualify for the major, that is very impressive. Now, let's look at TSM for just a moment there, because this squad earlier this year won the Invitational. The yep. world champions currently reigning as world champions, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody was expecting, oh my God, they're going to make it to Charlotte. They're going to bash everybody in Charlotte. They didn't even make it there. So that's one thing. Going to Berlin, same thing. So they went from, what, ninth? then to eighth, yeah. and then we're thinking, okay, there's a big hubbub on Twitter about all of this in August, and here they are, now at the top and in the playoffs at the major. It's unfortunate, but it's a very common trend that we're seeing with teams. You win a major or you win an SI, and then the period afterwards, there's this little hey, bit of a dip coming after. Um, like you mentioned, ninth in NAL the first stage, eighth in the second stage. There needs to be a change in that regard. They did that. They brought in Snake, they brought in Gasher, whereas you know, these three players have been helping the roster a lot. Gasher plays a little bit more of the supportive backline role. Snake is picking up more of the fragging role. And with these two roster changes, they're back at the top four of NA, and they're not just back on a major, they're in the playoffs. Bolo mentioned it. That's where it started last time for them as well in Sweden. Playoffs, onto the finals, and winning SI. There is a funny thing about that roster change too, is that I'm starting to see a pattern in removing two support players, bringing one new, and then bringing a fragger, so you have four mm -hmm. fraggers and one support. What's up with uh, removing support players? Come on, guys. <laughs> the ultimate Mira player, the Mira Thermat player in here that's talking about it. Honestly, it, it makes a lot of sense. The game has shifted. The old guard has, to, has had to step aside. The game meta game has changed. But also, it just seems like you need to adapt more. You know, we were talking about this over the past year on the EOL broadcast, that when it comes to roles in Siege, everybody has to be flex. You know, there's no, even the supports are flexing harder than even entries were in the day. Remember when you saw Empire dominating the game? That was one uh, IGL, one vision, and like everybody just following that one direction step by step. You cannot do that anymore. The mm -hmm. IGL cannot see everything. Everybody needs to be able to take their own decisions and find out a little hole or an opportunity somewhere, call it, and everybody plays around it. That's something that's new, and you need to be flexible, abuse the attacker repick too. All of this. Sure makes sense for the new meta to bring new fraggers and remove a little bit more of support players. It's been really fitting the play style of TSM well, because if you look at their attacking runs, I personally think that their win factor isn't necessarily planted in the diffuser because it doesn't happen that often. It usually comes down to very high player performances, like 2Ks, 3Ks. If you look, for example, at CCG, if you look at their matches, it's those huge personal performances that really help them win those rounds specifically on attack. So it does really fit that current meta, but sometimes it can be a little bit risky to just rely on players stepping up and popping off, because if it doesn't happen, if you have a day where you don't get your gunfights, you have a really difficult task ahead of you. Maybe having, you know, a flexitarian diet where, you know, you have some plant-based <laughs> options yep. within your team is something that Flex. you used to have. This, is, this yep. is what Jack was talking about earlier today, so we'll give him credit for it. Anyways, but on to our maps for this series, as we got us behind the entire squad, of course, big veteran of uh, the NA region and competitive siege. First up to ban is TSM. They remove Skyscraper. And uh, well, for the first pick, it's Villa. Next up, Sonics picking up Theme Park. Finally, our decider is Clubhouse. Surprises? Mm, 
quite yes. a few surprises. I said, I said <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah? I, I think this is one thing that I know best because I know that I initiated this in EU United and they kept doing it. I think Sonix is going for what I call the BO1 strategy. Ah. They made two huge changes, right? Geo comes in, NAL is two play days per week. You have to have a really strong but sh shallow map pool, right? So what they do is they focus on main maps. They can take any team to that map, but they're so good on it. But then there is other maps that they don't play. And coming into this major, and even out of groups, Sonics managed to hide four maps out of five. Mm -hmm. That would be Bank, Cafe, Theme, and Villa. Oh, well, well, look at the surprise. Villa and Theme Park are the two, two maps that are being picked, and two maps that they've never showed. I mean, if you look at Villa specifically for TSM, right, it's a map that they've been banning for a little while, but it was one of their most important games during the group phase, because that was the game that they played against Liquid, and they had to show their absolute A game, because that was the game that was going to determine whether they would make it through to the playoffs or not. They specifically played well on attack. Uh, it was the only time they actually played Villa in the past few months, though. Uh, Team Park, if I can touch on that still as well. Uh, TSM banned this map quite a lot so far during this tournament. They have a 50% win rate on it. Sonics does not play this map at all in recent history. Like you mentioned, they have been hiding something on that. It could be really good for them to show it later on. We're going to have to figure out what actually happens in the server because, yes, we're running on limited information. They don't really play the map, so this is the perfect time to do it in the playoffs. So how are we expecting very quickly who takes map one, Leo? I think Sonic should take map one as a, a low preference map for TSM and something they're behind and preparing. And? It would be a really good revenge tour for Geo if he's able to beat his former team with his player. new team with some maps that they've been hiding. All right, very much looking forward to the Steam Park is up first, one of my favorite maps in the game. I know some people might disagree, but hey, it's a bit of variety, a bit of spice of life. Thank you very much. Anne and Alphama will toss it to our casters. We got kicked. Well, no, Intero and Pango, enjoy. <laughs> Don't blame me for that at all. It's born into your skull after all of these years. Welcome aboard, everybody. It's time for our very final quarterfinals of the day. It's the North American, can I steal this word? Can I say Derby? Because they called it the French Derby when it was BDS versus Wolves, and now it's Sonics versus TSM. We've got another one of our interregional matchups. <laughs> why are all of the same regions playing each other? What, what, what happened what there? Happen? I don't know why. <laughs> Who did that? Who's responsible? I don't know. Sonics whoa. versus Team. Whoa, 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 hold on a whoa, second whoa. here. Nah. Sonic 73%? That's illegal. That's got to be wrong. <laughs> Stop the count. TSM didn't just lose the vote, they got smashed in the vote. Oh boy, oh boy, oh Must boy. Happen. That is, uh, that's not the result that I thought it was going to be. We go to Villa, this is TSM's map. Sonic starting on defense, operator bands, Sledge oh. and Dokabi, all right. All right, so starting with the target band onto a Chief, of course, his most played operator. Dokabi, a very common band for TSM. They've used it in four games in the group stage uh, against various teams and various maps. Valkyrie, common information operator. You always gotta remove that if you wanna play in the shadows. And Miro. Follows Troop as the last defender to go off the board. On Villa, a very stable operator to extend out around the map, and that will be taken away from both teams when they're on the defense. It's gonna be TSM starting an attack, Sonics defending. Round number one, Kitchen Dining. Could we see a bit of a change up here? Statistically, we always see AVG first. Doesn't matter what team, what region, but this time around, Tertiary Bomb side is where we start. Do you consider this the tertiary bomb site? Because I feel I like do. a lot of teams Defender use kitchen bomb. and trophy interchangeably. I don't... It, I, would, I would agree with you. They do use them interchangeably, but I would always say that when you have two floors above the playout in a similar fashion with a similar pick rate as, as the, so to speak, tertiary kitchen bomb site, yeah. Also, if you want to look like long term, since Villa first came to Pro League, that's where you saw AVG and Trophy, you know, very hard statistically being the number one and number two preference bump side. So maybe I'm just an old dog. Maybe I'm like kind of sticking to what used to be the norm. But I would argue, I would agree with you, Parker. You could use it as a secondary bump side. Uh, in your defense. Okay. If we go to Siege GG and we look at the pick rate of bomb sites on For just this event? For just this event. Okay. It is the tertiary bomb site. There it is. You may fist bump. I may fist bump myself, but then <laughs> Right. In terms of Villa, if you're looking at the actual round-by-round round breakdown, this map has been played six times, 70 rounds in total. 
So you're looking at about 11 to 12 round average for Villa, which means that this is not a quick map. We tend to see teams go as far into regulation as you can. There is no unlimited overtime for those of you that are following at home. So when you go to OT, it's just a simple three rounds that we are accustomed, accustomed to outside of the major. 56% of those 70 rounds have been won by the defense, which means that that is a fairly defender-sided map, but not as defender-sided as some of the others that we tend to see. This bomb site, kitchen and dining, has been played 16 times, and its win rate on defense matches the overall win rate of Villa. Villa, 56% of rounds won by the defenders. Same with kitchen, 56% of the rounds played on kitchen down below, won by the defense. That means that Sonics, just in terms of basic numbers, should have a small advantage. System starting on attack can be trouble for, troublesome for them. Want to get as many rounds as possible. Every single round here matters for them. One thing that's going to make that harder is that sledge ban because the chief is going to be out two grenades every single round, and those often find opening kills for TSM. And vertically speaking, I mean, Buck is equally good to Sledge, but it's gonna be comfortability taken off the board. And Sonics, they open things up and they take down Snake as the opening kill. TSM fighting against the numbers on this bomb site, but now also staring down a small deficit. Achieved on the Buck is a familiar sight, though. That's one thing to note. This used to be his staple operator back when Achieved made his debut in Pro League playing on that Accelerate Gaming roster. Oh, people remember that all the way back in the day. And he did so when Buck had grenades. At one yep. time, there was a very real discussion as to whether or not Achieved was the best Buck in the world. And I mean, obviously, Buck's pick rate has fallen off significantly after losing those grenades, but you still find him on different bomb sites because of what he can apply in terms of that vertical presence. And the one thing that Sledge can't do is he can't really do any damage from below. Buck is going to be able to make some significant noise when the bomb sites do go upstairs. TSM running on the clock now, right now. 35 seconds. Sonics again to these strong, aggressive positions. They can go for her flank, but the timing, it favors Bolo instead. Yellow Pin came out. They had information. Geo facing his former team and former teammate in Bolo is the first casualty for Sonics. 20 seconds left in the round. Gasher holding onto the case. Well, to be escorted in. The two big guns from TSM, Merc and Bolo right now, have not made much progress getting on in. Bolo softened up Merc as well. SQ far enough back, allowing TSM to walk in towards the bomb oh. site. Bolo finds oh. a way, but it's the Capkin traps to do some serious damage. Gasher with Diffuser will get picked off by Kans, and in the dying moments of the round, Sonics start off with a victory on defense. The thing is, you're always going to be fighting the clock when you're on the attacking side, and that's when Capkin makes Cap can excels, especially in Villa. There are so many doorways, multiple floors, even in the basement you can put down those Capcom traps. And I mean, when you start talk about starting sides, defense or attack, I always make the argument that for the first time on the stage, so quarterfinals, there's a slight advantage, to me at least, on starting on the defense. You can get comfortable in your chair, on the setup, in the server, set up the problem for the attackers to solve, and just watch them how they approach it. Because, I mean, look at that round. Half the battle for TSM was simply being fast enough and proactive enough to get to the bomb set with enough time to spare to actually get something done. When they got to the bomb set, it was sub 10 seconds. Chaos ensues, and as you saw, Capcom traps, they blow up. Two of them, that round, in fact, taking off half HP from two different members, and, well, it ended Bolo's life entirely inside of that memo room. So one thing that I want to fixate on, obviously absent from the lineup from Sonics on this particular round, Nick, is the prevalency of Capkin against TSM. They had to deal with TSM, or they had to deal with Capkin in most of TSM's group stage matchups. Yep. And the, the one that really jumps to mind, of course, is their match against Team Liquid when they were dealing with Capkin traps and they were just struggling to find that info on where they would be. There's already been one EDD kill so far when Bolo didn't check the bottom of the door frame inside a memorial. You think that's just that TSM are a bit too sluggish as you talked about how strong the EDDs can be in the later rounds? Or do you think there's something more to it with TSM just maybe not being the most proficient? Oh my, oh. hold that thought for a second. 
Because Merck's going to hold that L. Rexon oh. picks him off over towards Study. A grenade was tossed in by the Yana, and Merck is 0-2 to start off this match. I will say, Sonics are so good at just applying pressure towards TSM at every single chance to get. And I mean, TSM, they're storming it in top main, but Sonics, they've surrendered this ground, and Geo has a nice angle on this part just to hold top main position. Rexon and Geo holding similar positions. The three separate players from TSM can very easily fall in. In fact, the whole team is in that part of the map. Gunner's the one to take some damage. Bolo reads on to Geo. He's yet to die. Gasher in two. Both players from Sonics who were holding AV during games, which is not the bomb site, but is where they were playing. That's great for TSM. They managed to push off those Sonics players that were holding map control outside of the bomb site, and they have an advantage now because of it. That's exactly what you want to be doing. The risk when you extend as a defender is that if it isn't successful, you're going to play at a man deficit or deficit. They did get Merc early, early on, but you lose two members and half HP and Gunner to trade it off. That's not good for you. I imagine the Sonics, they're going to be aggressive here. Got to try and leverage back the numbers and find an advantage somewhere on this map. You have no C4s, no impact grenades, no smoke. I mean, frankly, all you have to work with right now are gunplay. And Grixler, he whips every single bullet and takes so much damage himself. Gunfire being exchanged, and TSM trading out a lot of HP. Bolo with three kills, five and one so far. Kansan's pulled off clutches before, but he's got the daunting task of getting back up the top of the stairs, and he might turn his back to that window at the top of Astro. A drone goes by, but does not see him. Oh, oh, Kansan somehow manages to get away. What? Does damage to Snake in the process. On Repel doesn't see the elbow of Achieved. They started off the round strong, but TSM falter through the mid-round, and TSM end up gaining their first round. TSM playing a very nice, slow, and calculated late round of that. But with 40 seconds left on the clock, they didn't need to push anywhere without knowing where Kansan would be playing. So they started droning it out. They saw he's on Astro Staircase, and sure, Achieved had been slipped by there in towards bathroom, but he's still going to be stuck in that location after that fact. And worst case for TSM, they lose a member as they just did, but the plan goes down, the crossfire is there, and Kansan not in a position with enough room to get those final three kills. That means he's in they take the round. It's gonna change things up. Why go trophy again? Because you got more places that you have to go to. Library, that fourth bomb site, we have not really seen it being played out, I believe, at all this major so far. And that's not uncommon. But if there was a time to bring it out, it would be in those high pressure moments, like the quarter, semi, or grand finals. Instead, it's gonna be that trustworthy AVG defense. Asami, noteworthy operator, can really shape up the bomb site and the roam game as well if you wanna assist that. Rexen is opting for the Frost. No, no deployable shield in pocket. It's going to be a deploy uh, bulletproof camera instead to grant you that information. That's likely because the Valkyrie is banned from TSM. The previous round, we saw the extension up towards Study. It was a off-site hold. Because of the bomb site being that Aviator game site, as you mentioned, you're going to want to hold on to study for as long as possible. You might fall off of it if you feel like that's where the main focus of TSM is going to be, but Sonics don't just have a single point of focus on study. They've also got some players over towards Bedroom. Gunner, who was playing in that position, now finding some safety with the Kiba barrier. TSM gets their first pick of the game, and it's onto the roaming Rexon that we'd seen before. That's why the Asami is so strong, both in the Rome and the bombs that it's I mean, Look at this. A single keeper barrier is stalling TSM so hard in this window position. And they did toss out a grenade towards the door location, so the keeper barrier stays alive. Because Bolo found that opening kill, though, they can now take their time and slowly pro uh, progress to Master Bedroom. And Bolo finds another onto Kans and Gunner. He has to get aggressive now. Round number one went so well for Sonics, but they've kind of lost the plot at this point. Grixer decides for an engagement against Achieved. They both lose some HP in the process. Nobody from the Sonics above half HP. Gunner spotted from down below. Achieved still holding in this position. Geo and Grixer the last two left. Grixer must have made a call that Memorial was being held by TSM, but whether it was or wasn't relayed, doesn't work out for Gunner. Didn't seem like it was communicated at all because he's sprinting towards that area and Achieved did a good job of just playing really passive, waiting for Sonics to come to him because you don't want to throw that man advantage early on. This is a waiting game at this point for Sonics. 5v2 favoring TSM, looking for their second round in a row. It's their map, remember that. 
Chiho finds the Gemini, shoots it away, but intel as to where one of the two remaining players from Sonic Star is now given to TSM, and it's Bolo in the hunt. Seven kills. That's a big tally at this point. That's the real deal, but Bolo trying to refrag does so successfully. Last one is Grixer. He was engaged with Achieved a minute before. Took a while, but finally Achieved gets his kill. And with it, TSM take the lead. It's worth note that TSM statistically throughout this entire tournament of groups so far, they don't really have like an outstanding performer when it comes to like the pure plus minus in Kim's terms of KD. Snake is plus five, Achieved is minus one, Bolo is neutral, he's on zero. Minus four Gasher, minus two Merc. It's not like you shut down one member of TSM and ah, now they're gonna fall apart. No, it's every single member being so close to one another statistically on the scoreboard that it's a full team performance. Whereas when it comes to Sonics, you got Rexon. He's plus 10 in KD. He's also in rating, the third highest rated player, 1.29. In terms of clutches, third most clutches with three on the board. So there is an outstanding performer from the side of Sonics. Gurkstar, of course, second on the board, then Gunner, then Geo, then Kansen. Kansen in particular had a really tough time during groups. So we gotta keep an eye on him. Right now he's doing just fine. Three, two, and one on the board, not bad at all. Top gunning for his team, but also just round number four is about to begin. Anything can happen. But as we continue on, that's where my eyes will be on the side of Sonics. This lineup for Sonics, lots of trap operators, lots of ways to slow down TSM. They like this Nook play. Nook obviously having a strong presence on maps where a deep and late entry can work effectively. You look at Bank, for example. You can look at certain mm. parts of Clubhouse. You can look here on Villa, where the entire bottom floor of this map is unused by teams more often than not. Yeah, you might see a pulse down there. The odd time you see a Kavera, there is a very <laughs> real ability for her to work the basement yep. and pounce upon an unsuspecting attacker. A Nook works the same way, but for the attackers as well. You could sneak in through the basement, walk up Astro stairs, and as long as there's no Capkin traps, Goo Mines, or Banshees on the board, you're going to go undetected. Good news for Sonics, you got all three of those operators. So plenty of ways to stop down Achieved. Plenty, plenty of ways to slow down and stop Achieved. Ultimately, should he choose to get in the building quickly. Oh, Grixer, the first one to take some damage. He's on a roam by Memorial. Kansen spotted by Bolo, who's now in the middle of the bomb site. He hits an EDG and another again. Bolo really needs to check those door frames. It's his second death to a Capcan trap so far through four rounds. Oh. Merc was almost in the middle of the bomb, bomb site. He's swatted away by Geo. TSM wanted to get in quickly. They did so, but they've now lost three of their players. Sonics just like the last time they defended this bomb site with a very big upper hand. I mean, Sonic's bomb site is rather weak and Bolo knew that from that drone information, but what he did not check or did not get droned for him was the doorway. And he got hit by the first Capcom trap and then was under fire from a member of Sonic's on the dining bomb site. Couldn't take the time he needed to check that second doorway. Gamble the 50-50, is it clear or not? Well, it wasn't. One went off in each doorway, he got taken down. And CSM are getting punished once again. And this sledge ban, it's forcing TSM to change how they play the game because Achieved is not on the sledge. So he has to get frag grenades to utilize his positions as normal, but he's on the nook instead going for flanks. He's not with the main roster and the core members of the team. Gas, Shira, and Snake now. They gotta find the round out of nothing. It's a great start. 3v2 with 40 seconds. Gasher and Snake, the two new additions to TSM. How poetic it would be if Geo ends up as the last one standing for Sonic. It might just happen. Snake goes down, Geo getting his revenge. Gasher's way into the bomb site is cleared because of Bolo taking out the EDDs, but the Capkin, whose traps had been so effective in that spot, sits replacing them and gets the final kill. For Sonics to go perfect on this kitchen bomb site, we won't see the defense come back here. It'll be locked for the remainder of this half. Mm. And right now, for Sonics, it's the only bomb site that they've been successful on. Has been so far, and kind of for the same reason as well. Capcom traps are just shutting down Bolo, and if we look at the scoreboard, that's kind of the name of the game right now, because I think Bolo's on eight or nine kills. Yeah, nine and two. 
So if Bodo keeps walking to Capcom Traps, that's an easy done deal for Sonics. But on the AVG and Trophy bomb side, it's less common to see Capcom as an operator being played out because there are far list always. We're talking about staircases, window repels, and of course, the main breach either in study or in the room of Master Bedroom, as we saw last time this bomb side was defended. So I want to see TSM try and get more together as a team because achieved on the Nook. He has to do it, right? He, need he needs those frag grenades, but when you play the Nook, you don't want to be with the main roster. You want to be off on your own, going for flanks. It's not working out whatsoever. So I love the fact that Gasher right now is hovering the Yig instead to try and enable the members of TSM to start that execute. Because unless Bolo walks and just kills people, they're not really going anywhere. Merc has been unsuccessful in the opening kills entirely. Zero and four hasn't won a single gunfight. That's uncommon for him, but if he stands winning those instead, or if TSM can change their approach to these rounds, that could easily be the way back in to get this last, or not the last two attacking rounds, both of which would be very important for them as Villa favors the defenders. Aviator comes a lot earlier than in the first rotation. Nick, why do you think that is? Come again? Aviator shows up in the rotation earlier. Yeah. I said, why do you think that is? Instead of going to Trophy Statuary as their secondary bomb site and using Aviator as the tertiary, Sonics have decided they want to go back to it sooner than before. Why do you think? Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? What do you think that is? You I think, do I need to say? <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, I got you. Um, I think it's not easy to hold AVG, naturally speaking. Bolo ten kills through his name because you can extend out more comfortably. I mean, if you compare just like the bomb sites themselves. Trophy, statue, not the greatest bomb site to hold. So it's all about the extending on the roam game. That's how Sonics they fell. Look at this bomb site, right? AVG and Bar. It's a lot easier to play two, three, four members in this small box on your screen, and you can just hold this area. Toxic Babe, C Force, Verticality, and Sonics, they got all of them. To back up your point, the only bomb site on Villa that has a positive win rate for the attackers is Trophy Statuary. Oh. 56% of the time, which seems to be a reoccurring number. 56% yeah. of all rounds played on Villa prior to this match won by the defense. 56% win rate for the defenders on Kitchen Dining. 56% win rate for the attackers on Trophy Statuary. Damn. Aviator Games, 64% of all rounds played on this bomb site, and it is the most played bomb site on Villa in the major, and it's got a 64% win rate for the defense. That is pretty good. Explosive goes in from Bolo, final minute, but Akiba Barrier immediately impedes his path into the bomb site. Gunner trapped in study. He's got a hole in the ground to look through, but he's got presence that might be on the balcony. Has to worry about the window. Yeah. And Bolo is on the other side of that door. Achieve just sees oh. one. Oh, gets a little bit cute. That's huge. Aid. Big pick by Gunner. 30 seconds left. Another kill from Bolo. He's in the midst of the smoke, taking damage. Has to fall off. That's and he user. gets caught in the crossfire. Grixer shutting him down. Diffuser surrendered. Candela's go out. Grixer lined up and knocked down. Bleeding out. Still a human drone at this point. Able to make some calls. That leaves just Kanzen and Geo. Geo looking desperately for the recovery. Won't be able to get it. From inside of study, Kanzen doing some damage, but he's picked off. Geo's the only one left against his former team. Blinded by the Candela and pounced upon by Gasher and Merc as the Diffuser goes down. TSM grabbed three of the rounds so far and in the first half have denied Sonics the possibility to win their first half. Realistically speaking, TSM should have never won that round the moment the Chief died on that study window repel. Because when that happens, it means all the four remaining members of TSM, they're all stuck on the same side of the map. Have oh no! No! An impact grenade hits the wrong area and a member of Sonics and the area not, of the Not just damage. one member. Yeah. Well, it hits one and, and it spreads, yeah. right? Air infect damage, half HP on both members. Looks like it hit Kanzen first because he took more damage, but Grixer was right next to him. They both take it. That's unfortunate. That is actually changing with next season as the prep phase damage has been removed entirely. Excellent change. Excellent change because moments like these, I mean, you can argue it's a player mistake, sure, but it's not really fair, is it? And, and you've they've done the Thunderbird of Darkdown, you've been laughing. The amount of times that we watch team kills occur at this level, 
it seems like the lion's share of them are done during the prep phase. Yeah. An errant shotgun blast as you're trying to set up something. A nitro cell if you want to open something up. Because believe it or not, there are teams that don't bring enough soft destruction and it necessitates a nitro cell to open up a rotation or a certain part of the map early on. Doesn't happen that often. But we've seen team kills from it. We see team damage done with impacts, even yep. though they don't directly kill. Kanzen and Grixer are now at the point where most of these guns on TSM's side will kill them or at least down them in a single hit. You don't have the ability to engage in gunfights with that same level of confidence if you were at full HP. Additionally, you're going to see a lot of spam through the walls. Mm -hmm. A bullet shot through the wall, even one is enough to basically put Kanzen and Grixer into down but not out, depending on what gun it is and where they get hit. So that's a damning blow for Sonics and not where they want to start off this very pivotal round. You're right, especially how they play. I mean, look at Rex. If he was half HP, would he take those initiations? I don't think so. Impact comes out. It shuts down that summer charge with TSM. They're storming up the main stairs instead. This Rome extension, they gotta fight for their lives. Look at Bolo. There he is again, but the proximity scanner will give his position away. Alarm goes off. Wasn't too far away from Gunner. Kiva Barriers denying entry to that same window. Bolo long range. Trying to deal with Gunner in that spot by 90, but instead will go on to drones. Sonic's oh. firing away. Geo had not very much intel. Gets the down onto Merc, but isn't successful in taking out either player from TSM. Gasher is able to get that first pick for TSM and get Merc back from the dead. That's a major win for TSM on their first engagement. I bet you're there. Geo said, I got one, I got one, I got two. But then right before he gets that confirmation, he gets shut down instead. And as you mentioned, Murr gets up on his feet, 20 HP, but Geo, such a blow in that round. And Kansen and Grixer, they're still alive, but there's such low HP from that impact grenade earlier. It's troublesome for Sonix. Merc with his low HP, spotted on a cam, sees the Azami of Gunner. Gunner wins that, walks away with 30% of his HP gone, but still standing. Nade from below, does it successfully clear out the oh. Kiva? We don't know. Great shot from Kanzen on Astro Stairs. Down goes Achieved. Grixer and Kanzen with that limited HP are still in dangerous position, but TSM are just walking into their doom. Bola with 11 kills is the only one standing. Four players to find. 30 seconds to go, not a wealth of time at his disposal. He doesn't have a lot of intel. Sees ahead, but he cannot outduel Grixer. Low HP, I guess it doesn't matter for Sonics because neither of those injured players fell during the entirety of the round. And the first half goes 3-3. Both teams taking their rounds for themselves. And we are, again, like we've said so many times, no closer to seeing which of these teams comes out ahead. It appeared to me like TSM was trying to play off pace in that final round on their attack inside because they weren't actually ready setup wise for any sort of execute on towards the bomb side. Nobody Astro Pell to shut down a couple of angles. Nobody at Master Bedroom Balcony to take control over Master Bedroom or Bathroom itself. It was all members on the top red staircase walking through a single door. And moments before that happened, Burke had just swung deep on Trophy bomb side and he got shut down by Gunner. So you're already playing four versus four. It's not that you can overpower the bomb site without having a man advantage at least not without finding an opening somewhere which right now it appears only really to be bolo who's able to do that at least on the attack but things will change now as sideswap comes through and achieve he himself has been playing a lot of capcam during group stage let's see if they can do as much damage to the players of sonics as they did to tsm we had some memes during group stage from Heroic, Uno, who, when they played against TSM, he said, GG's TSM, the hardest opponent in the server was the Capcan traps. And then TSM themselves, just, you know, two days later, they are running to every single trap possible. It seems to be a common problem for players at this event. One, because time is running low, because of how aggressive defenders are playing. And two, not every single team has as big of a priority on droning out those errors when you clear a room. Whenever you go through a room with a drone, check the door, check above the door for the other trap, check every single corner for Valkyrie camera in case Valkyrie isn't banned. If she is, don't gotta worry about it. I like the Jackal here being brought out because the roam game from GSM should have some presence, but the thing is, it's all upstairs right now for them, so nothing can be found on that first floor. 45 seconds into the very first defense for TSM, first attack for Sonics. With the bend of this map, you would have expected Sonics to have prevailed on their defense 
Four to two, that would have been in line with what we see out of Villa, but these are two evenly matched teams. And I mean, 56% in favor of the defense. Rounds one isn't a huge difference. <laughs> Capkin trap. <laughs> 3v3 is definitely possible. Capkin's traps are very much the story against TSM. And <laughs> now it's Sonics who find out just how much fun they can be to deal with. First half, Sonics got the first blood in rounds one and two. TSM got first blood in the remainder. Despite that, they weren't able to fully convert. Not a lot of objective play whatsoever. And three bomb sites seen in rotation. Living Room Library has only been played a single time here at the Major. And we have not seen it in this matchup. I would be shocked if we do. But don't hold your breath. Crazier things have happened. It's true. And then I guess they lost that defense because the bomb set is not good to play on. <laughs> oh, no, they won the defense. They did win the defense? 100% wow. success rate on that. Nah, I take defenders. it back. That's the best bomb set in the game then. I mean, statistically, it is the best <laughs> bomb site on Villa. Yeah, sure. Not a big sample size, though, whatsoever. whatsoever. Aviator Games being the bomb site that we see right now in the defense with a small advantage in terms of numbers gets pick number one. A second follows up, but Gunner is able to do some damage for Sonics, taking quite a bit of beatings in the process. Also taking so much time again, 40 seconds. We just got to top red 90 and sure, Merc, he was holding that top red position, but it shouldn't take you this long to problem solve. And now, what a great grenade! Oh my god! Asher doesn't know it, but he actually stepped back into that as yeah. Pixar used yet another nade from below. No explosives remaining in the hands of Sonic. Still the smokes from Jackal. The Diffuser wants to go down if there's some objective play. That's oh, risky. Bolo decides to take the engagement. Down he goes. Grixer falls next. Rexon holding the Diffuser in the midst of the bomb site. He gets something working, but it's the Nitro Cell from Achieved. And TSM win their very first defense. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. It's, again, TSM, they're kind of stealing these rounds. And Bolo, he's just going on the offensive time and time again and really is the hero for his team because he has 12 or 13 kills now after that round. And, I mean, Merc did such a good job staying alive in itself. Massive value. But it's Bolo's really making things happen for TSM. The lead is good. You said it, Parker, to your point. 56% favorite defenders. You would think Sonic should have gotten that fourth round, but in round number five, it was Bullet, it was TSM stealing that ABG attack to make it a 3-3 tie. I'm just gonna keep on taking what they can get. No cap on the board this time around. So hopefully, every single member of the attack inside of Sonic sh should be healthy once that execute comes around. Nook's prevalence so far in this matchup cannot be understated. Using those grenades from below, we've seen both teams get some success at at least being able to open up sight lines into the bomb site, if not get a pick with it. It's Gunner with the Nook now on his side of things. If it wasn't for Bolo's performance, I... Oh no, he can actually be spotted from that panel where he is. Look at that. He's out. That's a dangerous game to play for Snake. I do like that he's going for that gamble. I do like that a spawn peak is on the board for TSM. Good confidence to get under the skin of Sonics. Why not? We'd like to remind you that this is TSM's map pick. So with it being a defender-sided map at the moment, and with it being picked by TSM, and TSM now having the advantage on defense, mm -hmm. according to plan, we should go to 11 or 12 rounds and get TSM the win. That's if nothing <laughs> changes. Okay. Sonics knows that. They come in with the stats. The coaches have prepped the win rates for certain bomb sites, the win rates for these maps, and the win rates against their opponents, because while Villa might be 56% in favor of the defender rounds, it's possible that TSM have a poor defensive win rate on Villa. As we see teams in North America, some excel at attacks, excel at defenses, mm. and this is information that Sonics will have at their disposal. Still, the point being made, TSM are in the favorable position from here on out. They are on the better side to close out this matchup. And Sonics will need to dig deep if they want to be able to not just keep pace, but possibly overcome that hurdle and take the win, pushing us to theme park, which is Sonics pick for map number two. Merc playing top red instead of near the breach is a bit of unfortunate for TSM because he has two spare impact grenades in his pocket that could have been used to deny that summer charge, or at least part of it. Instead, now bombs are under pressure from Master Bedroom Balcony and Merc's position as well as Achieved. They're bad now. What was such a strong position is now, well, it's been broken apart.
Gunner could make a huge play either with this grenade even below. Yellow ping is there. Gash, you gotta move, buddy. Otherwise, you'll go flying. Is it the second before. time that Gasher's walked into that? Yeah. Not ideal. You still second, hold on. Second nade goes off. No target this time. But Sonics, excellent play from down below. Frost is dead. Mats will still be up. Similar to the Capkin that we've seen be so successful up to this point. Even if the operator is dead, those traps exist until the end. And Frost gains greater strength the longer that this round goes on because you're not going to be checking for Frost Mats because you're going to be in a hurry. And you're not going to do that due diligence and figure out where a mat might be. Speaking of uh, speed, I mean, Sonic's got to knock down that door on the bomb set because 20 seconds left. Gunner got to walk up that extra staircase, has to flank for now, but Dio, he goes first. Oh my, Bolo looking the wrong way, and they'll breach in. What can Achieve accomplish? Absolutely nothing. Merc, the only one to get on the board so far. Snake sees flank. one, two! There's nobody watching. Astro stares. Kansan's in a favorable position. Five seconds. But he's got to grab that diffuser or go for the pick. Kansan decides to one go One second. For it. And he, oh, he gets it at the last possible oh, second. Second. Well played by Kanzen, and just by the skin of his teeth, gives Sonics the round. I mean, I was talking earlier, the one member to keep our eyes on from Sonics, who statistically did not perform during groups, was Kanzen. He started strong, he was like 4-3, and three, top ranking for his team. But that moment right there, that's a full-on round that he can add to the scoreboard just from that play. I didn't think there was enough time for to drop the hatch and go for that kill. And it's such a 50-50 for Snake, right? Either you go up the Astro stairs and you risk getting peaked early, or you walk too far away from the bomb site where if the plan starts going down from Kansen, you don't have enough time to get back there. I would make the argument that in that particular position, because it was Oryx last alive, you can actually jump up the Astro hatch. You could have fallen further back towards kitchen dining or towards that shoe locker room instead. Because if you hear that plan being enabled, you can skip the Astro stairs entirely and go up a hatch right next to the bomb site and then shut down the plans. These small details between which operator is alive can make a massive difference. But ultimately, Kansen, he steals it for his team. It's a great start for TSM though, burning down that clock, holding down strong. They fell apart, however, and the flank, it almost paid off. It wasn't close enough though. That could have been a heartbreaker for Sonics. TSM going up 5-3 again. Winning out on defense, picking up a victory on Aviator, and then picking up a victory on Trophy. But yet, it is denied. With that win on round number seven for TSM, defending Aviator, that means that the three main bomb sites shown on Villa have all been won by the defense at least one time. Mm. A little bit of disappointed that no cap cans on the board for this round on this dining defense. Neither is the pulse. Damage goes on to Snake instead, though. Gunner on that top red window repel. He had the rotation. I'd be kind of miffed on that one. I'm. Failed to see how Snake was able to walk away with his own life. Oh, Bolo's getting real <laughs> tricky right now. He lost the deployable shield on the bedroom bed. Bolo steps up to fill that void himself. He's been exceptionally good for his team, though. He's slowing down a little bit. He might get pre-fired, but he engages. Gunner takes out Merc. Gunner just missing out on that opportunity to kill Snake earlier on. He had a slow start for his team, but now Gunner's picked up the pace and is the closest player on Sonics to break into double digits. Yeah, Bolo not just playing well, but playing aggressive, right? He's the only real stopping force for Sonics. He's always slowing them down wherever he is in the map, whereas well, where Merc is, normally he just kind of falls to the ground and buys Sonics time instead. Gunner, the only member with grenades on the board, is across the map from his team and cannot help them break anything. But Sonics, they've got map control. They can start doing that vertical damage destruction on towards the bombs. So that's going to be Kansen on the buck. But because he's not the sledge, you can't use any grenades. And because Gunner is the lurker, so to speak, again, you have no real utility to use. When it was Sonics on defense, Memorial was the playground for TSM. Walk right in, get a pick or two. Oh. Nitro Cell from Gasher connects on to Geo, and that's Diffuser down as well. Foot just clipped through the floor there. Another Nitro Cell goes off quite so successfully. Bolo picks up lucky number 13 on the stairs. Sonics got that first pick on to Merc, and they have nothing else to show for it. 
Rexon has to retrieve the diffuser. He's playing up top. Grixer's in the basement. The bomb site, however, is in between the meat of the sandwich, if you want to continue on with that pun. <laughs> top floor being the bread, bottom floor being the other side of it. Only 15 seconds left. Rexon will have to drop through the hatch into laundry and then get into the bomb site if the play is to get that diffuser down. Maybe a pick or two to start off with. TSM lose Gasher, but down goes Rex and Grixer will need to find all the kills. He gets one, but they're just gonna wait out the time. Bolo and Co hang on, and well, this has been a back and forth for these teams. TSM regain the lead. Round by round, one at a time. The flank right now for Sonics is a big problem. Two rounds in a row now. Sure, Canton clutched that trophy attack, but the flank is what enabled Snake to get into a clutch position. And in this round, dining attack as well. Bolo flanks bottom red stairs, wins a gunfight, gets bombsite control, gets a second kill afterwards with the execute. Nomad might be brought more flank drones or just more priority from Sonics to focus on that area of the map that is going to be the flank. TSM, the changing operators quite love on this defensive side. Gasher. The only really stable operator and consistent pick throughout this match is Smoke. Then Achieved, play some Castle, play some Capkin, whichever. Merc, usually on utility duty right now, always picking one area of the map that he cares about. Top red for this bomb set last time, just sits there, waits. And then it's Snake and Bolo. They get more freedom, right? Bolo wants to play Warden this round, we give Bolo Warden. Wants to play Jaeger, give him the Jaeger. Snake has had a. Not a quiet game, he's 6-6, six and six, but it feels like we haven't said his name much because he's just kind of there, floating around. But he has found those kills for himself. Geo has brought out the Capital, the first real execution-based operator for Sonic so far. With Gash in the Ying for TSM, it's going to be the fire from Geo instead. Good drone work from Sonic. They know the whereabouts of one member. If you can get as many drones as possible into the building without losing them in the process, you can create a network. This is clear, that is clear, etc. They can practically guess that Snake has to be inside a bathroom or living room because of that drone work earlier on. He figures it out, he runs away, but he kills a drone in the place instead. They're gonna turn out the bathroom where Snake is playing on that bottom floor. Spoke of Gunner and how he's picked things up on this second half. He's a relatively inexperienced player when Sonics took a gamble on him, adding him to the roster to replace Yeti. Well, I guess, I suppose Gunner was actually replacing Super. Yeah, yeah. And then Geo ended up replacing Yeti. Technically speaking, yes. Technically Just speaking. not in roles. That was, yeah, that was the series of events, obviously. Yeah. And Gunner had some issues at the start of this stage of the NAL with being a bit, <laughs> a bit too ballsy and getting picked off early with nothing to show for it. Snake to do it this time. Mm. He'd wanted a spawn peak earlier in this second half, couldn't find it, goes for the jump out, gets punished. Well, I like the aggression, I have to question. When time is on your side, five versus five, and you're the supportive roam cast from TSM, is it worth throwing your life away for a 50-50 without any proper information? I'm not sure. Either way, Capkin Trap goes off again. It's an injury onto Gunner. It just keeps on happening. What, what should they do, Park? Is it IQ time? Just scan every doorway? What do you do? Develop eyes. Develop, and drones, yeah. Develop eyes. You have so much time left, and yet you're just not looking at these door frames. Is it possible that Achieved never got droned out and they just weren't aware there was a Capkin on the board? I mean, that's entirely possible. Possibly, possible. yeah. Even though Gunner had been down by that, he wasn't killed, so... Oh no, the man who'd gotten him up and got the very first pick as well was Kanzen. He goes down, trading out. Geo taking some damage. Gunner, Gunner still... Cool. Oh, Bolo. Bolo! Playing around the door frame, takes out Geo, but TSM, unfortunately, get a team kill. Doesn't matter, they find two more in quick succession. Rexon is outside of study, hops in, gets murked, but that's info. They know he's inside of study, and those toxic babes could keep him at bay. Gasher has none left. A flash as Rexon's in the middle of the bomb site, but Achieved is in a tight corner, and that's TSM on match point on their map. I was gonna say it was a very clutchable round in that one versus two, but without any information to work off of. It's a guessing game. I mean, you saw that again the aggressive play from Snake must have had some sort of information as to the whereabouts of a member, but it was wrong. Bolo again, the star, gets two kills in a one versus three position while
being taken damage from his team member's toxic babe while getting flashbanged, has to force the gadget on, and somehow still makes a word with that SMG-12 with high recoil on a very far away target. 16 kills for Bolo. Yep. I know that you might get tired of us talking about one of the biggest stars in all of this <laughs> eSport, but with 16 kills against one of the best teams in North America this year, Sonics were actually the best team in North America last year. They won the NAL Finals yep. and then have been so consistent this year. Obviously not as good as they were, but still near the top. The fact that Bolo can just absolutely flatten them is a pretty good thing. <laughs> Sonics will take their time out with how even this matchup has been. I think now is the time to do it because when it was 5-4 in favor of TSM, it had been such a seesaw of a match that very easily could have ended up going back to a 5-5. Five -five. Mm. And in that case, you might want to keep the timeout for when it is most critical. I would say at this point in the in time, the stage of the matchup is pretty critical. It, <laughs> when you start seeing match point and you have less rounds, it's very, very critical. I would say from Sonic's side, I mean, look at the maps being Villa into Theme Park into Clubhouse. I feel like if Sonic's would have been Villa, it would almost guarantee them to win the series. Because TSM, not historically known to be a great Theme Park team in the NAL. We, we all know the memes. They lost it like four times in a row. Um, and Clubhouse is statistically Sonic's best map at this event. And overall, which means historically, they are the ones to win that map. So it's almost like the quote-unquote expected outcome for TSM to win Villa. At the very least, if they don't, it's trouble for them. It just means it's a close series. I mean, 6-4. It's as close as it gets almost before entering OT. Merc has really struggled to find success, I will say, though, on this map of Villa. And it's a map in terms of playstyle where Merc as a player typically thrives. It's a big open map. You can take gunfights left and right. You can either fall back or fight for your ground. But he's three and nine, and he was playing those kind of like, you stay here till you die positions on Wamai, on top red stairs, etc. Now he's been given a little bit more freedom on the visual. A very stable and comfortable operator for him. We all know that when TSM plays bank, which Sonic's banned against him for this match, by the way, it's always Merc and Vigil running around, activating the scanner, keeping them guessing as to where he might be. He's in that basement that you spoke of, Parker, waiting for his time to go for that flank, which they know that Sonic's, they aren't typically watching. Merc could be the star player for this match point round. This is the lineup that we've seen these teams bring. Hasn't really been a dedicated flank watch operator. When you look at the ops that can fill that void, I mean, the newest operator, Grim, is quite literally a flank watch operator. Hasn't been played here yet, but then you've also got Nomad being the most prevalent. You've got Zero who shows up on a couple maps with those Argus cams designed specifically either for entry or to cover a flank, and then you've got Gridlock as well. These teams foregoing that, instead bringing this Nook as a largely flex op, and instead they want to go for direct action. Why do you need a flank watch if you just kill everybody on the bomb site, right? I mean, that's, that's how it works. Sure. But it's cost you so far. I mean, Nook again, you need that second set of grenades. This grenade could be the difference maker, but no, it misses. No clear information game, but now Merc knows someone is down oh, here. Oh, Merc just Timing. missing out, but he might not have a lot of kills, but instead providing high value with that one. Four and nine on Merc is a tremendously poor result for him. But oh, what? Rexon decides to go on to drone. Achieved reads that one out so well. He's very up in your face. Now it's Kansan to go on, but there's going to be a bit of fear in the hearts of these SQ players. If you go on to drone, are TSM going to swing you because of it? That is the question. It's very simple and small mistakes being made from Sonics, but TSM are capitalizing so well upon it. And now Kansan, Gio, and Gurkso, you got to clutch it up. Well, Sonics get on the board. No flawless round to be had. None yet that we've seen. A stun onto Achieved, still prone on the ground. He gets swung on. Grixer pouncing on that opportunity now, walking into the bomb site. Bola will be called into action, losing oh. it. Grixer hits that shot. Merc had gotten one on the cans in as well. 2v2, time not on the side of Sonic's Geo going for the plant. He's we'll going to be vulnerable. Exactly. Grixer will need to watch, and with how good Grixer has been before, you can bet on him to watch so safely, but Snake on the flank takes him down. Grixer oh. shouldering off a lot of damage. Timer running. Crowd starting to chant TSM. Can it give some power towards Grixer? 
sitting inside of the bathroom. He's looking in the wrong direction. He's down. They just need to hop on the diffuser. The smile on Snake's face tells the whole story. And TSM will win their map 7-4 to four and go up 1-0 in the series. When Grixer and Gio are in that 2 versus 2 I mean, Gio's got an easy job. Hold F and hold that Grixer can just stay alive and make something happen. Being shot from two different angles, it's too difficult for him. The tank goes down short. The first one of the series doesn't make a difference, though. Post plant, not good enough. Uh, it started off with Bolo toying and playing with his food. And despite how close that match ended up being, it was still TSM finding that supporting cast to help out Bolo and to help out the rest of the team. Sonic had some good performers as well, but time and time again, those first bloods breaking in favor of TSM would often shake things up for Sonics and put them in a bad spot to then recover either on defense or on attack. Either way, we got 11 rounds out of Villa. That seems to be the norm with what we've looked at statistically over the six, now seven times that this map has shown up. So everything going according to plan, really. I mean, except for the Capcom traps, the flanks, and the opening kills that you're not getting if you're Sonics. Besides that... I mean, things going according to plan for the map. Sure. Not for the teams. Sure. But I mean, whether you're... Tr are you trying to misinterpret my words? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. But I mean, even if you're in middle, it's like, you're not supposed to get hit by five or six Capcom traps throughout a map. So, by map standards, that's also bad. Use your eyes. And drones. And, and also drones. Communicate with your Pilot words. Pilot them around, do whatever you need, look down. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Just look down. I urge you to do so. Well, there's a lot to talk about in that matchup, and good news is we have a desk to go over it. But before we get to them, we have a break. We'll be back in just a couple minutes with our final quarterfinal. I'm Nicholas Martin, but you know me as Pingu. I'm a two-time Rainbow Six Siege World Champion and former top Rainbow Six Siege player in Pro League. Welcome to my Siege Ranked Bootcamp. We're talking 20 seconds left on the clock. You got the diffuser in hand. What do you do? Play the way that you're comfortable with because you have confidence when you're in this position. That is when you're going to be at your very best. Good luck.
Our reigning world champions continue with a map one victory over the Sonics. TSM take it up, but will it be a map three or not? That's something for the players themselves to decide in the server. But let's debrief map number one. We'll bring you in onto the analyst desk. Welcome, Mr. the medic, your host. With me are Anne and Alpha Man. Alpha Man, you talked quite a bit about the Sonics before we got started, about all the strategies that have been doing, you know, micro, macro, and all that. It looked like TSM had control over quite a few rounds in this matchup. I mean, most rounds, yeah, really. It, it really showed that I think Sonics weren't really comfortable on the map because they were always going uh, theoretically, for the easiest takes, was direct takes or vertical play, having Gunner as a lurker on knock, the rest of the team working the bomb site, and all the time uh, in defense, they were just trying to waste time, not being proactive, not being the one aggressive, and that was the biggest key difference maker. TSM was controlling the pace. I mean, in those mid to late round parts, there were also kill feats that were all of a sudden turning orange, whereas it, there's a lot of TSM players just stepping up to their plate, getting those kills on the Sonics players. And I feel like the main thing that happened was that the Sonics players were a bit unaware. They seemed like they were getting killed when they weren't even looking at the TSM players. They were getting shot whilst they were uh, up from, from behind. They were shot or getting run out on whilst being on a drone, for example. Like, that player must have had a heart attack when the player came jumping out the window against him. It feels like a little bit uncomfortable on the new map, maybe, as you mentioned for Sonics. Um, TSM made really good use of that by playing the Capcan, playing the Frost, just w making sure that if the players are unaware, if they're not checking corners, if they're not checking these angles, not being aware of these flanks, well then you can utilize that very well by playing traps. Yeah, I, th I think uh, Sonics really tried to play this the right way, right? It was perfect siege, like step by step, we're doing this, but every time before the execute, when the comms are getting a bit loud, when Geo is gonna call the execution, you're trying to hold your angle, but you're thinking of the execution. At this precise moment, every round, TSM was able to aggress and get the kills. Is this something TSM can use and abuse because Geo is on the team, that they can kind of predict how this will play out because Sonics might have been relying on his experience on the server? I think it doesn't have much more to do with Geo, but more just in general, okay, things are a little bit slow here. Mm -hmm. It's the, the, the calm before the storm. Yeah. We know this is the timing we should aggress on. Ready? Three, two, one. Let's go now. Boom. And then boom, two, three, four kills in TSM's favor. What do you think about that sludge ban, by the way? I love a nade operator ban on a map like Villa, because we know it's so heavily influenced with nades coming from underneath. Banning an operator like a sledge might make that more difficult. You have to rely on those three other operators that only have access to the nades. And then it kind of bit Sonics in the back when they were on their attack in half, because then they were rappled on the Astro window, mailing the Calcibur okay, cake, because there wasn't a simple or easy way for them to take it out. It, it kind of bit them in the back a little bit a few times. Yeah, I think that's why I'm not really a big fan of these disruptive habits, uh, you know, target operator bans, because in the end, most of the time, it kind of turns against you. The, the player that's been playing Sledge is perfectly able to play another sub breacher mm -hmm. and absolutely do the same thing. All right, and now top players for all this uh, matchup. Bolo on top of TSM, 16 to 8. I think he played a huge part in those mid to late round flanks, whereas he was using the first name to pop up yeah. in the kill feed to get those kills on the unaware Sonics players. And he's had a really good performance. I'm hoping he can keep it up because prior to this game, his stats weren't better than the top two performing players on the side of Sonics, but maybe this is the game where he can turn that around. I think the real reason and the main reason why TSM was proactive was because of Bolo. He was the one and the deciding fighter. The opening kills were from him in attack. And the moment that they decided to aggress on defense was because of him. All right, and if we were to turn our attention to our second map, I think it's the right time for it. Is there players who are just getting back, they'll be sitting in their seats in just a moment. We'll put that map on the screen for everybody to see. We went through map one and TSM were able to take control. But what happens now on theme park is the big question. And we talked about teams kind of hiding strategies, hiding maps in the pool to use. Is this the one that Sonics can use to go to map three? Yeah, I think this is the real question, right? Are they going to be able to really master the map and be comfortable on it so they, get, they can take back that pace, take back the control and be the ones that are proactive, be the ones that are aggressing, be the one pressuring the opponent? Because so far they're not able to do it on Villa and I want to see them able to do it on their map pick. 
I think Theme Park might be a really risky map for that, though. As an attacker on Theme Park, you always want to have the advantage when it comes down to man counts. You want to be able to push from multiple sides at the map. But if you're so down to the basics, where you're trying to make sure your team is not getting flanked, and you're aware of the traps and everything going on, then also pushing from two sides of the map is another aspect of play that might make it even more difficult. Also, because it's a new map for them, you know, they might show the same kind of uncomfortableness, which we saw in Villa as well. Map three, yes, no? All I'm asking. Oof. Yes, I think so, yes. I, I, I'm trusting Sonics to bounce back, bounce back from it and really abuse the pick that they've chosen. I think they've chosen it for a reason. TSM aren't near as confident on theme that they are on Villa, so that might be a deciding factor. And in the end, if, the, if it goes to Decider, Club is an amazing map for Sonics. It could be fully turned around, but if we look at recent history, then we had an NAL stage one, it was Sonics to win. In stage two, it was TSM, and stage three, it was TSM as well. But that game was by far the easiest one, and that was the only one with their newest lineups. So if you take that in account, I think it might be a really good setup for TSM to take this in a 2-0. All right, and Alfama, thank you very much. It's time for us to go into map number two. Our casters are set up and ready, so we'll see you after this short break. Well, TSM won their map, so now we go to Sonics's pick of Theme Park. Now, the desk talked about how this map has been hidden by Sonics. Yep. They haven't played here at all, so they know something that we don't. What we do know is that domestically, this map for TSM 
is a bit of a... It's a bit of a miss. Mm. Not hit and miss, just outright a miss. They played it, I don't have the exact numbers, but like four times in NAL, and like they lost it all four, even against Mirage's old previous roster, the one that wasn't major worthy like the current one is. It's not pretty. But TSM themselves, they've been hi quote unquote hiding theme park at this particular event. So they've had time to figure things out on their own, so then at some point, get it picked against them. And this basically is a scenario where it's on the board, Sonics didn't ban it out, and we're here. Teams do this all the time. They will go an entire stage without playing a single map. They will routinely ban it, and then yet amazingly, <laughs> somehow, the pressure on them is the most that it has been, period. And I don't actually think the pressure for Sonics is more than they faced at SI. For no, them. no. But here in an international major, you bring out this map when you think you have the best chance of succeeding on it. Time and time again, teams have done this all across the regions. And I'd say of all of the maps for you to hide against teams, TSM, this has got to be one of the best. Agreed. TSM keep coming back to Theme Park against other NAL teams, and they always seem to fall short. Can they get that proverbial monkey off of their back here at Theme Park and seal the deal, be at another 2-0, and go to the semis tomorrow? TSM are the only team still left in competition who have won an international major. They won SI earlier this year. If not, if Sonics can win the next two maps, then we would have four teams all vying mm. for their very first international major championship. That's exciting. That would be quite exciting. Unfortunately for fans of Sonics, you've got some waiting to do because they will need to win the next two maps. Villa went 7-4 to TSM. It was TSM's map choice, so it shouldn't really surprise you any that they won it. And when you get to this level of competition, quarterfinals at a major onwards, it's believed to be that you will lose your opponent's map. You gotta win the tiebreaker. Yeah. The thing is, the tiebreaker is Sonic's quote-unquote best map. So TSM, they would like to end things right here. And just to add another point on top of that is that if TSM can have a really dominant theme park run, that means that teams going to semis and possibly the grand finals aren't just going to go, haha, they suck on theme park. And now all of a sudden TSM's drafting gets a lot worse. So having a confident showcase right here, right now is actually bigger than just winning this quarterfinal. Seven rounds is all it takes for TSM to punch their ticket against BDS tomorrow. That would be an exciting affair. BDS defeating Wolves earlier on in the day. On the other side of the bracket, W7M and Liquid will do battle. Those teams have played each other just a couple. Just a couple. They've played each other just a couple times. Liquid seemingly the better team in those battles that they've had before. Liquid have made it to a major final internationally. W7M have not. And for many people at the start of the year, this was W7M's year. Be able to accomplish in their matchup tomorrow. Let's not get ahead of ourselves though, because we've got a game to play. TSM first pick on that round number one, and they will add a second to it. Grixer and Rexon impotent on their entry, and TSM finds themselves 5v3 with two minutes left in the round. Every single Siege player who's played Theme Park knows how difficult it is to attack on this map. Clearing the map, roaming, getting the breach, all in three minutes. Now imagine how hard it is in your ranked or casual game, and then multiply by like three times, because it's even more difficult at this level of play, where teams do not tend to make a lot of mistakes. It is so hard for Sonics to get a leg to stand on, and it shows in the first minute. TSM have two players up above over by Cash. This is a thrown defense down below. Half of the round eclipsed. Sonics have only two drones available to their name, but damned if they do, damned if they don't. They don't need one to find Merc. It's the first kill for SQ. Snake is looking in the wrong direction, by the way, but he'll hear the DMR from Gunner, and Snake will reposition. You can hold the parts of this map off-site for as long as you want, waste as much time as is humanly possible. Snake is repositioned, and Gunner is there to greet him. Playing this tight corner, Bolo under fire. Snake can come to the rescue, but Bolo is likely waiting, telling him not to engage. Gunner sustaining some damage. Kanzen now to come into the action as well. Pre-firing around the corner. There's Snake to take Gunner, and he manages oh. to get both of them. Bolo dies, but it's a worthwhile sacrifice. It's all up to Geo. He's got Diffuser in his hands. 45 seconds to bring it into the bomb site or three players on TSM to kill, either or, and it's SQ to win the round, but that's a daunting task either way. 
Snake and Bolo played that beautifully, just baiting him on in. And I mean, Bolo was quote unquote stuck in the corner, and they knew that. But the thing is, he had something up his sleeve. It was an ace card, and that was Snake hiding in the corner himself. And they got two kills for the price of one. Gio could go for this clutch, which is sit it out on the roof because that allows Sonic to talk it through almost like a tactical timeout without their coach available, of course. But the members can discuss what went wrong or what would change for this next upcoming round. Solid start for TSM as they will win the round. Timer will expire and Geo will just kill as much time as is humanly possible. Yep, yep. it was a formality at this point. One round off of the total that TSM needs to move on to tomorrow. They're gonna be all smiles about that one. The one thing is, is that while TSM might not be the most practiced team on this map in terms of success, they do have a lot of game day reps on oh, yeah. the theme park. Yep. Now, because of that, it cuts both ways. One, their familiarity with the map at a high stakes level is going to be higher. Time and time again, teams and us as casters will talk about the fact that you can Defenders scrim a map for months on that. end, but that is not a proper substitute for an actual game day match. So you can scrim it and have tons of success, get to game day and ultimately fall short yeah. because preparation is great, but your opponents actually have the experience in game. The other thing too, though, is that Sonics have no tape on them playing this matchup for TSM Attackers to study, whereas TSM have tons. So. If TSM have not changed anything up about the way that they like to, to play this map, it's entirely possible that they will make some small adjustments as we see the rounds fall round by round. Sonics can easily understand where TSM is going to be on, on defense and where they'll come from on attack and prepare for that. And even if they don't have, you know, the same game day performance that TSM has, at least you know how TSM is going to do it. You can plan around that. It's also why Sonic spend out the Ying. They know TSM likes to bring this operator for that execute and for the utility. But the one thing it leaves on the board and on the table for the taking is information. Look at this, Gasher on Echo achieved on the Valkyrie. The only thing we're missing is like an extra C4 to work with that information, but achieved yes, one of his own. So that's like, that's something. But TSM's thinking like a much more aggressive and front forward game of theme park than they do domestically in the NAL. So you asked, what could TSM have changed in the meantime? Well, this is it. Extension out around the map, deployable shields, setting up these really fortified positions that key members like Merc and Bolo, who loves to play in these kinds of positions, they can utilize. And Sonics, by breaking down the first window and door, they have a very hard problem to solve in front of them. You got a flashbang, grenade, time it, etc. Which is why you see nine grenades being brought, floors as well and two frag grenades. The thing is, Bolo, 16 kills on Villa in that previous match. He has so much confidence in this position to just play with his gun skill. And this is the true test for Sonics. Can they kill him safely or at least break this stronghold? Drones go in. Oh, Bolo no, he gets oh. both. <laughs> just Bolo things. This is a full friend, full frontal assault right now. Two for Merc, two for Bolo. We're 90 seconds in and it's Gunner in a 1v5. We've yet to see a flawless round between these two teams, but we'll see one there. Three kills for Bolo, TSM up 2 nothing. Yep, I said it. TSM's playing more front heavy in their aggressive roam. If we watched them just two, three, four months ago in the NAL, the second Bolo gets under pressure, typically he falls back and you play the numbers game, right? So usually, if anything else, you trade one for one. You take, you know, you take those. You're like, yeah, it's fine. Now it's four versus four. That favors defenders. But Bolo gets the double kill, sticks around, gets the triple. And while he gets that kill onto the balcony from the doorway, well, Merc covers the window jump and he gets two kills of his own as well. So TSM, they've really been studying and practicing playing more together. We don't need key members to pop off individually. We need key members to pop off individually with support from someone else, whether it's a camera or a gun. And in that particular round, it's both because you have the Yokai, you had the Valkyrie cameras, and you had an active member of Merc right nearby if things got tough. It's a really good look. Sonics, unironically, they're really good at this kind of play style as well. Playing together, playing off one another, trading, etc. But they haven't shown it that well in this particular matchup against TSM. And it's always tough with domestic matchups because you know each other's play style really, really well from all the practices and real games. But historically speaking, just TSM the Org and Sonics the Org, they've played each other seven times domestically in the NL. Five of those seven times, TSM, they won them. It was stage one in 2021 and stage one in 2022 where Sonics came out the victor. 
But the last time they played each other, that was stage three, just a few months ago, or like a month and a half ago, it was TSM who came out on top, seven to three on bank, but it's Skrxer who finds the opening kill in this matchup on theme park to open up round number three. We talked about them being a more front forward team through these two rounds, and I suppose Snake wanted to see if he could have some success. He tried as well on Villa, remember? Did, and yeah, same he, result. <laughs> he got punished by Grixer, so... Either way, I mean, you take a gamble. It's not always going to work out. In fact, no. more often than not, it's going to end up failing for you. Sonic's draw first blood in round number three. Yep. And honestly, if you're up two rounds like TSMR right now, you kind of buy yourself the risk taking because it's not that dire. You can play overly confident, overly aggressive, and the punishment is going to be one death, not one round loss. Rexen, he's going to step up the aggression as well, like flying in through this prep room. Oh, and he's far back of the bomb site. Geo is spotted. The shield is there. Merc does not want to tussle, so instead he runs away. What stops Amonti? If you don't want to engage head on, well, how about a nitro cell from below? Merc, the only kill for TSM oh. so far. The Monty is in the bomb site, and he's going to take the engagement. <laughs> Sonics win that one in a hurry. These are fast rounds so far. We're three in, and SQ gets on the board. That also wasn't the bomb site because that was the bomb site that we just saw being played out. It was an office defense, but the entire round, all 10 members were battling it on that extended roam. And CSM, they really put everything into it. The jump up from Snake was punished, so he played the four versus five. That's actually where Geo on the Monty really shines. When you have a numbers advantage because you're playing the Monty, you don't have that fifth gun. Monty's almost Defending always to going to be having to shield up and extend it. So by killing Snake early, you're playing five versus four with a Monty on the board. It's such a comfortable position to be as an attacking squad, especially on a bomb site like Office, where you can choose one side of the map and just walk on over. And you said Parker C4 could be useful there to try and take down the Monty, but it was only a Chief who had one in his pocket, and Geo did a good job at walking on the area of the map that you can see four from below, and buying enough time for the members of TSM to rotate around the fact that Monty was pushing them, and then the members of Sonics could pick up those kills relatively freely. Mr. Merc got one kill. That's not enough in this case. And it's actually probably why we're going to see Sonics try that same approach. Because in the first two rounds, there was no Monty being shown at all. Then we saw it in the last round, number three. And now because of that success, because how much CSM struggled against it, same exact thing got a tagger repicked by Gio and Rexen, the Amaru and the Monty, to get in somewhere on the map fast and start establishing control. Rexon's gonna do the exact same thing. He's gonna fly up in the break room. Remember that while all of the altercations that occurred in the previous round were around that bunk site, again, it is still locked. They cannot hold it. So they might play off site. Bolo in particular, first to fall in this round. Again, Sonic Straw first blood. Yeah, look at the orbital lineup as well from TSM. This does not stream strong bomb site setup. It streams extended roam and flexibility. No wall denies, no impact trick. Snake used that on the roam, the second one as well, most likely. Only one deployable shield, that's the only bombsite fortification. You live and die off this roam. Oh, Achieve doesn't see that position, gets spotted from the main oh. stairs, but Merc is the backup plan. He'll let his teammate die out as the grenade goes off. The link arms with Snake as well. The Monty still in play for Sonics, a 3v3 and half the round to go, keeping up with what we've seen through the first four rounds which is this breakneck pace that both teams are trying to set. Mm. We are already well ahead of schedule. Yeah. We're trying to send all of you home early. I don't even know if the West Coast is awake at this point. <laughs> Sonics brought two different kinds of attacks for this round. The front forward, that's the Amaru, and the side execution slash late roam clear on the Monty. Now, Monty's still alive, so phase two is there. Monty also has the hard breach. That's what I was just going to point out. They don't have a conventional hard breacher for the Sonic, so instead they're running with those secondary hard breach gadgets that are brought by the Monty and Geo. Mm. Can openers, as we call them. They don't have to sweat the denial because, as you pointed out, this is a Rome setup from TSM. If there is going to be a direct site execute, TSM might actually play for a retake at that yep. point. A Bandit, a Mute, a Kaid. These are wasted operators oh. with what TSM is trying to do at the moment. I think they missed Merc with a drone. It stopped, did not turn around. He's still staying, he didn't shoot either, so I think he knows, but they're on the bomb side. Merc has to flank. Two players from Sonics on board. Merc spotted, so that flank is not gonna work. Instead, TSM compelled into action, but Cans in a perfect lockout. Sonics have now picked up their second round in a row, and these teams are tied at two apiece. 
I am very curious and eager to see if Geo's going to make the call to play Manji through these next following two rounds, or at the very least, play it until it gets punished and no longer works, because I honestly would. It has really changed up A, how Sonix is approaching their attacks, but also B, it plays perfectly into TSM's defenses. It's a roam game, that's where Monty shines. You can help gain information, take map control, and B, the bomb side is so weak, you just walk on in. The best case scenario for Sonic's last round was what happened. Monty stays alive, uh, Nook and Amaru they down the room clear. You trade two for two, it's a three versus three, open round for everybody. Monty has secondary hop reach, could breach any wall he would like to because there's no wall denied from TSM. But they don't even need it. You just walk in, hold one angle. The teammate behind Monty fights the other angle. If you win that initial gunfight, which Sonic's did, you win the round. Merc was apparently droned out, at the very least, shot down on that flank. That was the only real way for TSM to get back into the round. And again, there's no smoke for TSM. There's no Yokai to counter the Monty. There's only a single C4. And some people might point towards the, the operator board and say, but Bingo, they're playing Oryx. And sure, let's imagine for a moment that somehow, somewhere, Merc can get close enough to Geo to dash into him, knock him down, and someone else kills him. Not gonna happen, because Geo plays a very passive and safe Monty. He understands that his role right now is not to get a single kill, or to do anything noteworthy besides staying alive, granting information, and just applying pressure by being on the map. He doesn't have to ADS, doesn't have to melee anybody. He is a walking drone that cannot be killed, and the other members of Sonics, they can just be enabled, find their comfortability in knowing what the enemy is, and then take that gunfight one on one. Yeah, and I, I mean, you've got your answer to the question here now. Geo's going to park himself on the Monte, and there yep. has been no answer from TSM when it comes to just leveling this mountain. They've brought some more tools at their disposal, trap heavy operators, and of course, people forget that while Oryx is primarily used for speed, <laughs> you can actually dash into the Monty to get that shield away. So, I mean, it's. There's a solution here for these shield operators. Rotero drones going in flashes as well. Bolo is in not the greatest of spots, yet he persists in this position. He sees the Monty, but is wary of somebody on the window. This is where target prioritization becomes a big deal. TSM are killing a lot of time, but Sonics have to sort this one out. Bolo, one pick, hunted down by the Monty. Doesn't know where the other player from Sonics is coming. Down goes the shield from Geo. SQ are summoning all of their forces to take care of these two players from TSM. Oh. Nate almost takes out Monty, but Bolo hit guys initially, or afterwards rather, from Grixer. Bolo, honestly, staying alive for that long, getting one kill, and Geo takes so much damage from his teammate's grenade. That's not gonna look good for Sonics. But again, there's no answer for the Monty. No C4 left, achieved, already spent his. No smoke on the board, no toxic babes. Geo can have one HP left, that's all he needs. No one can do any damage toward him. I mean, Snake has one impact grenade in pocket that could be the difference maker, but it's not likely. Especially if Geo goes to get that diffuser down, an impact would deal substantial damage. Maybe enough for a down. Greg's are watching the Monty walk in now. It's a Merc to take some damage. Oh Snake sees him, and there he goes! The impact works out perfectly. Geo falls, the mountain goes down. Achieved is to die from TSM into a 3v3. Execute will need to happen, but Diffuser out of reach for Sonics at the moment. Snake still sits on it, giving information to his team. Through the soft wall, he sees the bullets whiz over his oh. head. There it is, Kanzen to secure. Last two players from TSM just need to wait, but Kanzen is having an absolutely incredible first half. Merc in a 1v3. The top player at the moment for TSM. He just plays keep away. Have they spotted him yet? They push from the same direction. Two pairs of eyes, and it's Kanzen again. Kanzen, eight kills so far, and is a huge reason why Sonics have been able to keep pace. And now, with their three rounds in a row, have taken the lead away from TSM. Yep. And the question comes, are Sonics expecting TSM to heavily counter Monty, and therefore they go off it? Or is going to try one more time because of how well it has worked out? The answer is a bit of both. TSM to change onto Echo, which is a counterplay to Monty. And Geo also keeps bringing out this Attack operator. The one impact grenade in Pocket of Snake was what they needed. And thankfully, Snake was in the right position. <laughs> and as Geo said in chat, call me like a Pokemon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> when you have less than 30 HP, that's what happens. I feel like in the spirit of the new Pokemon games just being released last week, which big shout out to that timing. I downloaded it and then played it all the way over on my flight. So thanks nice. for thanks for giving me something to do while I was suspended in the air for a prolonged period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Colloquially, those impacts are referred to as Pokeballs, yep. where you throw it down, and then if you get the kill, you catch them. So congratulations to TSM. They will now be playing 6v4 with Geo on their team. Ignore the score sheet because they caught Geo, of course, and Geo showing off some appreciation for that play. Reunited once again, right? Because TLK... It's a joke for those of you that don't know. Yeah, I... <laughs> you just had to point out, just in case somebody's like, that's not real, is it? I mean, you got casual viewers who watch this who might of not course. understand that, oh, is that really the case? Why, Why does it show Geo on the left-hand side? It's a joke. You're going to see everyone try and Pokeball catch someone else in the enemy team now in their games. Being like, why are we not playing 6v4? It's not how it works. Geo, of course, was on that TSM roster previously. So there's a big, you know, matchup for him. TSM and Sonics, I think, both benefited from those roster changes. It's not a grudge match of any kind whatsoever. It's a matter of both teams get on top. I mean, both teams and those members involved, they're here at the event in the quarterfinals, unfortunately against one another so early on. But the point is, they made it here. Snake with the opening kill onto Gunner. Nook is off the board. That's a big sigh of relief for TSM because now they know cameras grants true information. There's still two nades for Sonic, so not all hope is lost. When it comes to the explosives at the hands of the attackers, Sonic's hid this map, so we didn't know what to expect with the way they would play it, but the Monty has been the biggest focal point for SQ's attacks. What will change when they go on to defense? Because again, we don't have tape on Sonic's on this matchup, on this map. Achieved, right. Achieved is down below, but there's somebody prone in the corner of Cafe. If Geo walks by and doesn't clear his corners, oh. there it is! Oh. Merc is there. They don't know that he's playing in that position, and he can dash away his Oryx. But on side, it's a big bait from Geo. I mean, Kansen's in with Diffuser. They can actually stop planting. No one is here from TSM. And there's been no hard destruction as well, so you're going to have to trickle in through the single doorways. Kansen, who has eight kills to his name, phenomenal on attack, now also getting objective play exactly. under his belt. 45 seconds, seven players still upright in this server. The three from Sonics can very easily watch the remaining entry points in, and TSM will have to trickle on in. This is going to be a near impossible retake for Sonics. They should have no problem clearing it out. And they read it so correctly. The site is free real estate. They walk in, get Diffuser down, and TSM lose every single player as they walk through the doorways to try and reclaim what they just lost. That is probably the hardest thing to do in Rainbow Six Siege. Retaking a bomb site, even though it's five versus four or five versus three, with no heart destruction being done. You have two doors to choose between to walk in. It's a crossfire on both. And it looked like Gio was like kind of throwing his life away inside a cafe, but it was actually thought out from Sonics. Gio did not have the diffuser like he did every single time previously. He walked into a cafe, he had two members' of his attention, and because the Monty is usually where Sonics will push from, well, when they spot out the Monty, every single member they came on over trying to take him down, and he had three members on that Maintenance window, they droned the bomb site, and when Geo walked in, they jumped in and took the bomb site instead. Retake occurred, it was not successful for TSM. 2 4. Now, Theme Park is a heavily defender favored map, 66% overall before this match started. Amaru thrown the most successful one at that, played 13 times, and TSM, they played thrown three times. They only won it once. Statistically, this is a bit of a nightmare for TSM because they should have won this a lot more. They should have won a lot more rounds, rather, than they did. You can still show up on attack. It's not impossible. It's just very difficult. And Sonics, they're bringing their own aggression. Alibi, Vigil, Lesion. Drone work's gonna be hard. It makes sense for Bolo to pick the Jackal to try and narrow down where the enemies might be located at. TSM themselves, they ban Dokubi so frequently. They're not, so they're used to playing without it, but I feel like right now they kind of wish they had it available because it would make their lives a lot easier. Merc had a hard time on attack on Villa in that previous map. Had a great defensive side, seven and five to his name, but he has to go huge right now to bring TSM back into this one. Well, first half now in the books. The tale of the tapes, why don't we? TSM drew first blood four of the six rounds, and yet they still only got two for it. Two of those rounds, even though they got the first blood, those are rounds five and six, SQ stormed the bomb site, and the retakes from TSM fell short both times. Diffuser went down in round number six. Bomb sites 
three of them have been played. We have not seen a lab play yet on that bottom floor, Nick. That is a bit odd for the way that we tend to see these four bomb sites happen. First battle goes off between Sonics. Grixer is the one. The crosshair from TSM pointed squarely at. They know they've isolated a player from Sonics inside a cafe. Snake is able to finish off Grixer inside of daycare. But there's two big picks from Sonics. Add to it, they are making mincemeat of TSM at the moment. It's just Gasher and Bolo left with over a minute to go. The only one to die from Sonics was Grixer, as we'd mentioned. Kanzen breaks 10 kills. What a feat that is right now. As for TSM, Gasher and Achieved combining for just a single kill yeah. through seven rounds. That at this level is unacceptably bad for a quarterfinal. And it is absolutely hurting TSM at the moment. It is. Bit of a wasted opportunity for TSM as well because Bolo's on the Jackal did not do the injury job, only used one scan, just the second one just went out in that roam clear. And that's where the round kind of died out for them. They could not successfully pick apart the roam and now they're paying the price. Sonics, they've all fallen back to the bomb side. They're just waiting for something to happen. They know TSM should not have a chance for this. Do have one member roaming out of Dark Lab for possible flank later on. Might not be needed though. TSM, they have nowhere to go, nowhere to go in. This might just be a formality at this point. It certainly seems like it. Gasher not able to get a kill. Swatted away 11 for Cans and zero for Gasher. That is quite the opposites. And they just say opposites attract, and they were attracted just outside of the bomb site. Sonics stretching their lead. They've won five rounds in a row. Is it time for TSM's timeout? Oh, oh. the answer is yes. Uh -oh. Right as I was saying that, TSM calling a timeout. I mean, it makes sense. It's uh, rather now than a match point, and rather now to get ahead of the problem than to find yourself too deep to fix it. Pojiman, a former pro player himself, should have plenty of things to say watching this. The worst thing about this, I feel like there could have been some, some worth in focusing the defensive side and taking that time out to discuss how do we deal with the Monty problem because you don't want to go 2-4 starting defense now you really got to pick up the pieces and do the hardest job the hardest way possible, finding four, five, six attacking rounds, depending on how we go in regulation overtime. It ha doesn't happen very often. Theme park attacks are incredibly difficult to pick apart, as we saw in that opening round for TSM. It wasn't even close. Let's see what they can do. I mean, my expectations going into this was if Sonics win, win Villa, it's a 2 c for Sonics because they should, in my book, take Theme Park. Playstyle wise, been hiding this map for a long time. TSM domestically, not the most success on it. So I'm not surprised if Sonics did take it here, but I'm surprised at how they got there at so far. The Monty pick from Geo, I did not expect it to work that well, not four rounds in a row, but it did. It's a very justifiable pick for him. Now, if we go third map, if Sonics wins here in Theme Park, it is going to be Clubhouse, which honestly is a bit of a middle ground between how Villa plays out and how Theme Park plays out. So these two teams should square off quite well there too. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need, when I say we, I speak for TSM fans, Gasher and Achieve to wake up. Achieved, you know, so let's just banned against him map number one. So he's still warming up this operator. LED5, he hasn't used it in a bit. He was on Bok previously and Nook after that. Gasher, when you're anchoring on defense, if you go 0 and 4, 0 5, it means that either the bomb side doesn't work out at all, or the roam game fails exceedingly hard. And sure, the, the roam did fail, but Gasher has to get something going for himself. He plays, plays that supportive role, Echo on defense, now Floor's on attack. We gotta get a kill somewhere, at least an assist on the board. Especially against Sonics, how aggressively, aggressively they're playing. One of the things that you bring to the table by being somebody who's played at this level before is talking from experience about what Gasher and Achieved are going through right now. Achieved in particular, Gasher is a bit understandable because he's not he's usually one of those, you know, the three points of the spear that we talk about. Yeah. TSM, we like to focus on Bolo, Merc, and Achieved as those three main weapons, Snake and Gasher often in that supporting cast. Of course, TSM have changed things up right now as you look on your screen. There's no real dedicated support amongst this five operator lineup. It's how they want to play it out. But what do you do midway point in this match? 
to find your footing and get back to a point where you haven't completely lost your confidence? And does that timeout the TSM take help at all? I mean, the timeout always helps. You can talk to your teammates, and of course, Pojo Man himself should be that defining factor saying, Gashu, don't worry about it, buddy, etc. There's two ways to go about it. Either give Gashu the freedom to play other operators that he wants to play, or just accept the fact that he has to support and enable other operators, or other members, rather, because he cannot find that success himself. Right now, he's trying his hardest to enable other members of TSM instead of becoming the enabler himself. There's a rappel up. The same Amaru play that we saw from Sonics will now be done by Bolo. This is the first lab defense that has appeared for us. In terms of the bomb sites, we didn't really go over the win rates here on Theme Park prior to today. Played four times, 61% of all rounds won by the defense. That is a much more lopsided number than what we saw out of Villa. Yep. Every single bomb site has a positive win rate for the defenders. There's not a single one that gives an advantage to the attackers. Lab is actually the most overwhelmingly defender favored, but it has only six pick rates. 67% of those rounds have been won by the defense. It's four of the six times. Again, small sample size, so not a ton to go off of. 18 times that Armory Throne Room Bomb has been defended, so that's something that we can talk about a little bit more. Defense working out well. Look at that. Now the kills have to come in. First two for Sonics. Gasher finally gets on the board, but is removed from Geo shortly thereafter, and Geo will continue to fire back. Oh. And guess what gets the oh. final oh. kill? Sonics run, in, run a Capkin, and it's TSM who run into it. Six in a row for Sonics. They're on match point. The lab bomb side is phenomenal to defend because you can quite literally have just one member on the side itself and four people roaming scattered across the entirety of the map. Sonics kind of did that. They started out very aggressively, fell back room by room at impact rotations. TSM. They were at the bomb site with 17 seconds left on the clock. Not enough time to again figure out the Attackers proper approach into the bomb site. That's also why Capcom traps, they start doing a lot of damage or even getting kills because you don't have enough time to check for them. And you're under too much pressure just rushing in through those doorways. And now you're staring down that match point situation. TSM can fight for a comeback and they will. But it's four rounds in a row to go into overtime. And then you gotta play those two or three rounds out as well. It's a very, very tall task ahead of them. Yeah, this might even be a uh, an FF go next situation. I was gonna say, it might be preserve your energy, go clubhouse, because it's gonna take a lot of mental strength to even make it through these rounds without falling apart, especially if you're a Chiefs or Gashu. I mean, you just want to go next at this point, unless you have like a miracle round to bring things back. Interestingly enough, Villa is the middle of the pack in terms of play rate. Theme Park is the least played map here at the Major in terms of play rate, and Clubhouse is the most played map here yeah, at the Major. Look at that. So we've gone from, yeah, some teams play it, to no teams play it, to every team plays it. Nothing really more to be said about whether that favors Sonics or whether that favors TSM, but always an interesting point to be made because it's not like these two teams are going with old favorites. They're not going with old reliable. In fact, Sonics picked this map, as we said before we got underway. For the first time, they've concealed it, and for a good reason. They are just crushing TSM. And I don't want to give all the praise to Sonics, because I think it cuts both ways. Bola walks in, takes out Gunner. That's the very first pick, and it's done with just a minute into action. But back to that point, TSM are also just not a good theme park team. They really aren't. They have never given us a reason to turn around and say, yeah, you know what? I give them an, I give them a fair shot here. Mm, no. And it's very apparent, especially on these attacks that Sonics were able to pull off. But now these two rounds in a row on defense too, showing that Sonics were prepared for TSM mm. and TSM's woes with this map have not gone away. They are still fighting for their lives. Doesn't matter the opposition. And I would not be surprised to see TSM, TSM ban out Theme Park should they prevail in this best of three, of course, in the semis and potentially grand finals, depending on how deep of a run they end up going on. Should they even make it past this quarterfinal? Oh. I mean, the thing about Villa is that it was a 7 4 victory for TSM, but Bolo dropped 16 kills and had moments like those every single round. That's not the story right now, but Merc follows up with another. So it's again the duo making it work. SQ is on the edge of greatness. Kansen picks up his dozen. Doesn't kill. 
It's got Geo side by side, botches the smoke. Tracers go overhead. These two are in the same place. Kanzen fighting for his life. He can't do anything with it. Geo swings on to achieve, but it's Bolo to find the last target. Three rounds for TSM. They break that six round streak that Sonics were on. They need some motivation and they need to start finding their footing. But that was the tertiary bomb site for Sonics. <laughs> yeah. So SQ now get to go back to Throne. And if they lose that, and TSM continues onwards in this map, then Lab opens up, which is yet another bomb site that Sonics won just before. I also I hate critiquing when teams they win around because it's like they won, they did a good job. So what's to take you know, what's bad about it? But let's rewind the clock to how that opening kill occurred for TSM. Who, it was Bolo who got it. Bolo jumped in a window, unaware of the member of Sonic's roaming, and he had to win a 50-50 one versus one gunfight, which he did. After that, Bolo had to drone for himself, give himself a yellow ping, remember the, that staircase and arcade, swing him one versus one, and also win that 50 50 gunfight. That is how TSM built two man advantages. By Bolo, with no support and no help from anybody else, making what we call a hero play. Bolo was also making hero plays very successfully so previously on Villa, but with support of his team. TSM right now, they're scattered across the map a little bit too much, I would argue. They're not getting that reliable help between one another they need. And it's also likely why we see members like Gashu and Chief being 2-6 and six and 1-6, and six, because they're not really able to help those injured players from the team themselves. Because ideally what happens is that Bolo goes in and someone else follows. And if Bolo follows, somebody else trades him back, you trade one for one. If all goes well, the backup is there just as a precaution, but you still get that kill for free. Bolo got spotted, opting not to shoot the default cam. Teams do that because they don't want to give their position away. If nobody's actively on the camera, then you can walk past it, and they'll say, oh, okay, nobody's come through Gong. Nobody's yep. come through Dragon. Of course, the camera's still up. It's just a small step that you'll see pros take from time to time to just try and bamboozle, confuse their opponents. Bolo gets spotted all the same, but just to explain as to why, oh, why didn't Bolo shoot the cam? Mm. Knowledge for those of you that might now take that and do the same. I would like you to note that they don't always follow that rule outside. Teams sometimes just plain forget. Yeah. Outdoor default cams and, well, it's not worked out in their favor before. <laughs> A little bit disappointed that Sonics didn't impact trick the water because you can absolutely do it. Geo and Kansen both have a spare impact in their pockets, but Prefire comes through to trade one for one. The bomb site, despite that wall being opened up, is still very defendable because of that throne in the middle of the room that grants enough cover for the defenders to hide behind. And Rexen took great advantage of that in that gunfight. Well, you lose Geo, who has proven his worth time and time again. And you lose Merc, who has been the most consistent force Ooh. for TSM. We talk about supporting cast. Both of these teams have a strong one, though they haven't shown it yet from TSM's side of things. At one point, they were a combined one kill, but now they've got four to their name for Gasher and Achieved. Bolo is the superstar in map number one. Still not performing up to that same standard, but now breaking positive with his eighth kill. Grixer will look to retake, high rate of fire, softening up Achieved, but heading back towards Split. He and Kanzen deep into the bomb site in an act of desperation. Out goes an impact nade, all while the diffuser's going down. Bolo trades himself out for Grixer. The Zof will continue to bleed out on the floor, but Kanzen has quite the mission ahead of him. Nice shot onto Achieved. Isolate these last two players. It's technically a 1v2 as Bolo is not able to do anything until he's brought back to life. But is he crawling over to one of the two players from TSM? Diffuser at the halfway point right now for Kanzen. Pre-firing away, they know he's worked it over towards Throne. Bolo Defenders back up. The he's got his secondary out. There goes the concussions. Kanzen pushing up, 13 kills. An aid goes out in front of him, 14, but he is out of time. No matter if he gets the kills here, this will just be for bragging rights. He gets oh. them both. Kansen picks up the quad, but <laughs> the timer is your god there, my friends. TSM prevail. And they've now won two in a row of their own. They are depriving Sonics of a quick victory and making SQ work awfully hard for something that they will continue to sit on the edge of mm. for the next two rounds. I know Kansen had no time in that situation, but think about the mental game that that plays. You're one versus four, 
And sure, like, the time runs out, but you get all four kills. He perfectly read the situation, right? The stun came out, he dodged it. The nade came out, he dodged that as well. And he expected the member from CSM on that Dragon Dodge to swing first. Gets that kill, gets the read. Then he walks into the maintenance room and gets both kills. One member prone, one crouched slash standing up. And CSM, they might go, oh, we, we got the round, but it's like you lost the one before. That's not a good look. And it's again Bolo getting those initial entries, opening things up. And there is one thing that happened last round that I want to point out. It was actually Gasher playing Nook and Snake playing Thermite, which is very uncommon for TSM. And look at this, it's Snake on Thermite and it's Gasher on Fuse? Question mark? Oh yeah, there we go, Sledge. Okay, that's more like it. <laughs> <laughs> so we had that story earlier, part of that conversation where what do you do if you're Gasher, right? You're the support player of TSM, you can't get into it. You're not really able to enable all the members. Well. Now Gasher is trying to get himself enabled and get confident and comfortable in the server. Oh! But Snake, not used to using his drones because he doesn't play a heartbeats typically, walks out of spawn a little bit too fast and now you're playing without your primary heartbreach. But it's not all doomed because Achieved, he's a smart man, picks up a secondary heartbreach option in the ace. This round is still playable for TSM, but they gotta do it. Four versus five. I mean, if anything, Gasher, he's got to play for two members right now because his duo who is allowing him the space of, Sna space of Snake, he's out of the count. Gasher gives his position away, and then there will be some bullet fire through the wall. To the top of the roof, he goes. I do find it funny that even though they've subbed out some players, TSM still have very obvious struggles on this map. You can see what <laughs> even one roster change can do to revitalize a team and increase their odds of success on a map that maybe wasn't always their strongest. And I think what this really speaks to is it's not the players, it's the overall strategy and idea of how to tackle this map yeah. has not been very good. It's the fundamentals, yep. the strategic fundamentals for TSM that have caused the most issue, not some magic failure of players or their mindset. As we hit the halfway point of this round, Gasher goes down to Gunner Sonics, one six in a row, TSM blunted that momentum by winning two of their own. But with these first two picks, SQ sits in a very comfortable spot. And now more than ever, Clubhouse is our third map, looks likely. It does, and I think you said it very, very well. Every single map plays out differently with the fundamentals and play styles and whatnot. And the way TSM plays Rainbow Six Siege just doesn't seem to work out on theme park. And it comes again back to how they played the defensive side against the Monty. That's where I see their issues lie. They've done a decent job on attack. They won two rounds so far. And this could be a third round, but again, it's looking unlikely. Three players from Sonics, either in split or one by the door. That is... Well, I mean, I guess you can have two off-site in that case. Primary Hard Breacher of Snake had died earlier, as you noted, but there was backup. Even if Ace is not often used as a primary Hard Breacher, you can still get that wall open if you need to. The problem is, is that the Selmas aren't anywhere near as big as a single exothermic charge. And that area that just got opened up by TSM happens to be where the Sonic's attention has now become focused. Both Grixer as well as Gunner are there. Bolo finds one. Gunner's lined up to get Bolo. Oh. Excellent read! Gunner perfect on both of them. Geo goes down to Merc, but he's the only one for TSM. If Merc cannot clutch out here, then map three will be where we go, and that's exactly it. Started in this round by Rex and Spawn Peak. It was the best player for SQ in Kansan to seal the deal, and we will need a third map to settle this North American brawl. Oh yeah, theme park almost went the way we expected in some sense here based on TSM's history on it. And Clubhouse is going to get very, very interesting now because Monty's on the board. TSM might need to just outright ban it to remove that from Geo's capacity and his flexibility as operators. Or just face it, head first. That's absolutely correct. What a showing from Sonics. There were some small warning signs there. The first two rounds breaking in favor of TSM. It's really easy for you at that point to say, oh no, did we screw up <laughs> by hiding this map? Did we screw up by going to a place that we know TSM are at least comfortable on, even if that comfort doesn't necessarily get them the results that they want? And then Sonics came alive and just started winning round after round after round. 
there was really nothing that TSM seemed to be able to do. They didn't have an answer for the Montane until the very final round. And then when it came to defense, they were a bit sluggish. Their entries really did seem to lack the same punch that Sonics had. Yeah. And by the time TSM regained their composure, it was way too, too late. late. You had a wiggle room of a single round. And Sonics read into that correctly. Go for a spawn peak and breaks your momentum and then carry over through the rest of the round and ultimately win it. That said... The desk is going to want to talk about this, and we're going to want to listen. But we got to go to a break first. We'll be right back. I'm Nicholas Martin, but you know me as Pingu. I'm a two-time Rainbow Six Siege World Champion and former top Rainbow Six Siege player in Pro League. Welcome to my Siege Ranked Bootcamp. We're talking 20 seconds left on the clock. You got the diffuser in hand. What do you do? Play the way that you're comfortable with because you have confidence when you're in this position. That is when you're going to be at your very best. Good luck. Welcome back, friends, to the Analyst Desk. We tie things up here and take it to a map three. But before we talk about said third map, let's recap and debrief after our second. We talked about hidden strategies and hidden maps. We've got experts here to help us through it. I'm Elis Dometic, your host. With me are Anne and Alphama. And Alphama, I distinctly remember that you were saying, Sonics have what it takes, I believe in them. And it worked out, got to say. Yeah, absolutely. I trusted the curveball they threw in the map veto. I knew TSM weren't really comfortable on theme, and that hasn't changed in two years. <laughs> uh, and, and Sonics especially had six, week, six weeks to prepare for theme, right? Um, and they all finished in the 12th of December, uh, October, actually. So, like, six weeks to prepare for a new app. I'm not surprised they were so good on it. 
They won six rounds in a row further into the game. That's very impressive. To keep up that momentum on a map like Theme Park, it's, it's really good for the vibes as well, eventually, right? Going into that third map, you just caught off a comeback victory, basically. Going into that third map, it'll really help them too. We saw some attempts from TSM. They were bringing out more and more traps. They were The confidence of that first map was actually seeping through into this one. Uh, we saw multiple spawn peaks in those first few rounds, which were, unfortunately for TSM, unsuccessful, but really good teamwork from Sonics really helped him win out this map. All right, any standouts for you? Yeah, yeah, I think absolutely. The, fu the funny thing is to watch the first two rounds. You see TM TSM super confident, taking gunfights, preventing Sonics from getting in the building. What's the answer then? Geo picks Monty, four attack wins in a row. That's super smart. And they played really well around it, and TSM had no answer. Is that a crutch though? I mean, consider Monty a crutch. It, it seems like the easy fix. I'm not getting in the building. What am I going to do? I'm picking Monty. People follow me and we play around it. But I mean, it's in the game. Why not abuse it? it Fair enough. It makes me think about Heroic in EUL, how they would do the same thing with Monty. Just get that ground, force defenders back. And then the next time they played Theme Park, Monty was banned against him. And they performed significantly worse. The main thing I fear for Sonics is if they were to pull this map out in, say, finals, if may they come through, then they have to rely on something else because they have to keep in account that the Monty might get banned against them. It's also what happens if you're able to pull this map up against BDS. Mm -hmm. uh, wait later on, after, well, tomorrow, uh, in the first semifinal. So, yeah, there's a lot of things to kind of worry about in that case. But again, we're looking a bit too much into the macro because we still have <laughs> A map three. And just to wrap up, map number two for TSM, what do they have to look at to improve? To improve, I think they need a little bit better teamwork. They're trying to adapt into these uh, strats that Sonics is bringing out. They're trying to bring with the strats. They're trying to keep, uh, you know, work into that with uh, with Amante coming out. I feel like they need the aggression, but maybe it was a little bit too confident as well. The last round as well, where the Thermite just walked towards the building without checking for the spawn peaks. Losing a Thermite in that part is very vital and you can't let that happen to you. Yeah, I, I feel like most rounds they won were actually still bull dependent and it wasn't really because of teamwork or strategy. Coming into club, I hope they have better teamwork because it's, it's, it's a map that naturally benefits from tier work, right? You have to be playing together to win on this map. So it kind of forces them to play that way now. All right, let's put up that map summary and look at all the players and their performance in this matchup. You'll get to see that over here as uh, Kanzen is just <laughs> oh. absolutely rolling over. I mean, come on. When, it's, when, you're, when you're winning six rounds in a row, there's got to be something to stand out to. I mean, I, I knew the kid had potential when, uh, <laughs> when we were trialing him. I think he proved to everyone internationally that he had what he took during that clutch 1v4 at SI. You remember this SMG11 clutch? Oh, I yes. I, I think Demon Kia fans out there will remember that very well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, um, yeah, I think, I think he's always that reliable guy that is always going to be mechanically skilled and is always able to answer with firepower in a difficult position. And you know what? Let's talk about things in deeper strategy. We love to do that here on the set. And for that, we have our first telestration of the tournament. We'll go to the telestration station with Miss Anne. Exactly. I'm honored to be doing the first illustration of, uh, of the playoffs so far, but it's actually a really good play from Sonics that I wanted to highlight where they really utilize that Monty to gain ground for themselves. But there's two very important assets to that strat that I want to talk about first. I'll highlight the Amaru ready to repel into the break window. And another part that I really want to highlight is the player downstairs in Drugs Lab, which is the knock ready to contest anything that might be happening underneath in Dork's Lab to, you know, contest the push that is happening above them. Because right above that specific player, there's a Monty and a Sledge in Cafe, and they are trying to push the players outside of Cafe and get control over this hallway. Simultaneously to that, the Amara will grapple into Break Room, contest the hallway, achieved! Actually acknowledges the situation, knows that he has to do something about it, wants to go downstairs, where the knock actually is, eventually he will get killed by that knock. And the players, the Monty in the Sledge and the Amaru can just sandwich the players in the hallway and the bomb site, and then flush onto them further. Gunnar, as you see, takes care of Achieved who went underneath to solve the situation. They will get the final two kills, and it's a very good round from Sonics where they use that Monty to get the ground for themselves and push the TSM players away.
Thank you very much, Anne, for breaking things down here on our round. And now we turn our attention to our next map, Clubhouse, in this series. We finally get a map three, and it's our final matchup of this first day of playoffs. Now, what do things look like statistically for this, Leo? Well, like I touched upon Clubhouse before, right? The thing is, for, uh, for Sonics, it's one of these, uh, these maps that were in this BO1 strategy that they played a lot. They have a four win streak on them. So 100% win rate, four wins in a row, good enough. And if you look at TSM, they lost it 7-1 in group stage to Heroic just a few days ago. So I would say statistically, it's quite obvious which maps, uh, which team it favors. Um, it should be Sonics also coming from that momentum of just winning the game. I want to go a little further into that point you're making because yes, TSM won and lost it once during the group, so it's the only two times they played it. But if you look at TSM, it's their worst attacking win rate by far. But then if you look at Sonics, it's their best attacking and defensive win rate in the past four months. And like you mentioned, they have that four game win streak. But as a team with the worst attacking win rate, to go up against a team that has their best defense and attacking win rate on that map, that must be really scary for TSM. Oh, that's the reverse of them we're looking at. It seems like now Sonics have pulled control back into their side after the first map loss. What can TSM do? Because you talked about, hey, maybe they need to play a bit more cohesively, more as a team, but in terms of actual strategy, because at this point, we always say it, if you can't play Clubhouse, you might as well not be here. Let's go back to, to Villa, where they floated the players when they were right about to go for the execute, where they flanked the players where they weren't even aware of them, where they caught players off guard when they were on drones. That's the TSM I want to see back, and that's the confidence I want to see from them. The traps were really nice and fun, but they didn't really work. Yeah, I, I think I saw them swapping roles on theme and doing things like that. Let's go back to classic. It's Clubhouse. You've been able to aggress together collectively on Villa. Do the same on Clubhouse. Take back the pacing of the game, control the game, and they should be okay. Bolo versus Kansas. I can't wait for it. Thank you very much, Alpha Man. And that is it to prepare you for map number three. It's Clubhouse, a classic one. And who is the best team in NA? We'll get to see in just a bit. Sonics versus TSM continues after the break. No more talking about it. The way it is, the way it is It's no mystery There's no getting around it When you're here, when you're here We got chemistry We light up When we ignite We are stars When you leave, don't forget to remember, don't forget to remember me. When you leave, don't forget to remember, don't forget to remember me. Remember. Fight for you every second To keep your touch, keep your touch In my memory I try not to regret it What could have been, should have been If you would stay with me When you leave Don't forget to remember Forget to remember me when you leave. Don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember me. Remember me. Oh, 
It's map number three, baby. Clubhouse between Sonics and TSM. You got the team from last year that was the best team in North America. You got the team that has probably the biggest win in the whole world, being world champions, yep. winning the world championship here in Sweden. It might have been in Stockholm and not technically in Jönköping, but either Still. way, TSM started the year off by winning the Six Invitational. They, no doubt, would like to end the year off with a major win. It looked quite likely after map number one, but then map number two, threw a wrench in the plan. Both maps have gone 7-4, number one, 7-4, in favor of TSM on Villa. Then we went to Theme Park, and Sonics won their 7-4. And now, what are we going to see on the most played map here at the Onshirping Major? Clubhouse. Operator bands are coming in. Sonic starting on defense. TSM on attack. I mean, you asked what are we going to see. Look at the bands. Thermite into Hibana. Back to back Heartbreacher bands, followed by the two most common bands of Valkyrie and, of course, the Asami. It's not uncommon on Thermite to have either a Hibana or a Thermite band, but having both in the same game, you're now limited to Ace and Maverick. And of course, secondary Heartbridge gadgets, that can opener, which we'll have to see a lot of those operators because you need a way through the walls on this particular map. Cop House, the number one thing when you're attacking is breaching the right wall in the right way, in the right order. It's all about checking your team's fundamentals, sk fundamental skills, both in terms of droning, map clearing, and then setting up the execute, and finally, the execute itself. And that's gonna be a lot harder for these operator bands when they're in play, because you gotta find a different way, a little bit of an unorthodox method. Something you're not used to because you don't typically practice for this scenario because you cannot control what the enemy is going to be banning out operator-wise. I mean, TSM, they always make top four. Whenever they go to international turf, they do not go out in groups, they do not go out in quarters, they pretty much always are guaranteed a top four spot, especially at majors slash invitationals. They always make deep runs. But I will say, talking to the players, their manager, etc., coming with two new players in Snake and Gasher, two unproven, young, talented players, Megan here making top four, that was a great achievement. Making it through groups, also a great achievement. Beating Sonics and going to semis would almost be like beating their own expectations at that point. Whereas I think Sonics, they're expecting to go far. I mean, there was also a lot of discussion about the Sonics team being extremely overhyped internationally, right? If you go back and you look at Sonics' uh, achievements from Mexico onwards, they're not particularly great. You've obviously got SI, where they made a deeper run than I think people expected. But there was some conversation that I saw on social media, and I don't mean to be dismissive, but a lot of times those conversations are completely useless and an utter waste <laughs> of your mental capabilities. Fair. But there were people basically saying that, oh, well, you know, now that they don't have super, this team is going to be even worse internationally because blah, blah, blah. Sonics have an opportunity to shut those people up. Mm -hmm. With a big win oh, over TSM no. making top four, Captain that would be trap. huge. Again, Capcom Traps. They've proven to be quite a, uh, quite a hurdle. Yeah. That TSM are just not able to step over as they've been stepping into them. Of course, this doesn't define the round, but if you're Merc and it's the opening, you're oh, let me just waddle in main door here and taking a great. Oh, the Captain Trap. Okay, half HP. It sucks to deal with. And to make things worse, Gunner also takes out Bolo, the other key member for this interplay. Bolo has been that Captain Trap magnet, so now the rest of TSM are going to have to find them on their own. Sonics holding that garage position, pick off Merc as well. That was the buck of TSM who was attempting to open up the garage wall. TSM, obviously not the start that they wanted, finding themselves in the 3v5. 
You can bunker up on this bottom floor bomb site on Clubhouse. So even though we saw an extensive roam situation for SQ, they could get all five of these players safely back to the bomb site. And they've yep. done just that. A minute to go, you can now hold the very narrow doorways that your opponents are going to come through. And there's no additional hard breach. You're, nope. roll you're rolling with a Maverick. That's it. Yep. So Gasher will have to use that tank of gas to open up these hatches. But by and large, TSM will be boxed out of the bomb site because they don't have anything else for secondary. Heart Breach, the Buck and the Ace were the two primary Heart Breachers for this team, and they're gone. It's not just the gas, it's the time. It's taken 20 seconds plus. We're still working on this hatch, and I mean, Gasher, he has Diffuser. I mean, now's as good a time as any. 20 seconds left, 15 seconds left. Snake walks in through blue, he's down in the smoke. Achieve tossing in a nade, a drop from both him and Gasher. Gunner pulls out the shotgun, Achieve denies a flawless. TSM double up, but they're running out of time. It's all just up to Gasher, who gets an exit kill. And with the diffuser going down, silence at the last moment by Geo. Sonics take their very first round. I just wanna say that Gasher really tried. He's 110% to win that round. He walks in, tries to get the kill, and a point in five seconds, he starts planting in a one versus three with two members staring at him. I mean, if that doesn't scream, I believe in the clutch. I don't know <laughs> what does. But TSM starts off that round in the worst way possible. And I have a big question mark next to a note I have on my on my iPad here. Bolo on ace. Bolo map number one, key member on the entry. That's how TSM, they found success on their attacking rounds. On Villa, Bola did not show up until the very late, you know, last three rounds or so. Before that, he was pretty quiet. Merc had a hard time himself in that moment as well. Now, Clubhouse is one of those every single operator has an incredibly high value kind of map. Look at the right hand side right now in TSM's lineup. Zero, the only real information gatherer for the team, or flank watch. Achieved, only set of grenades and verticality. Then you got Merc and Bolo, both on a hard breach. That's just changed right now. And Snake plays that flex role, typically a second set of grenades or an entry operator. No matter who dies in this squad, you're losing something with very high value. Which means Sonics, they can just play really aggressive. Rexon, he can go for a spawn peek. If you kill any member, you're laughing all the way to the bank and you're taking that map for free, or that round rather, for free. There were some changes last second. Bolo has been granted a little bit more freedom on the floors as Gasher takes on that hard supportive role, and I think that's the right play. We need to try and enable Bolo the most if you're TSM, whereas on Sonics, you just focus on Rex and Kansen and Gurkso to do their thing as always. Gunner, he's been showing up very well so far, especially on Theme Park. I'm not worried about him at all. And Gio, I mean, he plays support, but he has the most kills both now and he was third highest in kills on Theme Park despite playing Monty for like four or five rounds. Maverick has been a staple for Heartbreach, and why is that? Because Hibana <laughs> and Thermite are banned. Yep. There were days where Maverick would dominate Clubhouse, being able to open up some of that escape tunnel slash dirt, being able to open up hatches. If there were troubles with bandit tricking or Kaid Claws or Mute Jammers, you could use a Maverick to open up that main breach leading into CCTV and also to Jacuzzi. CCTV afforded you a little bit more flexibility because you could have the other back window that could see if someone was bandit tricking or if there's an Electric Claw in that area or a Mute Jammer as well. Jacuzzi can be a little bit tougher to open up because there's yeah. no soft breach underneath it for you to destroy, whether it be a Claw Jammer, etc. Well, you're all right. The thing about Maverick is that in the latest patch, you know, three months back, he lost his grenades. So playing Maverick is actually a rather low value, but you have no other real choice right now than to just bring him most rounds. TSM made great work this round. Jacuzzi Breach opened up, window pressure as well. Snake below this main staircase flank could be the difference maker. Gunner was uh, trying to be a sneaky boy and Achieved says no sneaking for you at all. This is I'm very sneaky, so oh. aid from below, hits Kansan, does a lot of damage, Second. follow up. Yep. It's it's Mark Kansan down for the count. Merc, the first one for TSM to bite the dust, but not yet. He's just on death's doorstep, but he's allowed in. Entrance granted by Rexon. Achieved goes down too. Sonic's fine, quick kills, and a third as well as Grixer brazenly peaks the logistics hatch. Diffuser is now on the roof. 40 seconds to go for the last two players for TSM to find it, but I imagine with the HPs on Sonics, TSM will go for kills instead. Bolo thinks that there's one nearby. He meets the Alda of Geo, leaving Snake in a 1v3, 1v2. 
going to be a 1v1. Oh. Look at the HPs of Rexit and Geo. Just a single bullet. Snake has 14 left before a reload. Those numbers will continue to go down. Shrugging off some of that damage from the Alda pistol out. Geo wins that engagement. So good on these defenses. Yep. SQ starting off Clubhouse 2 0. It's a very, very difficult position for TSM to start off. 0 2. You had a five versus three with members of SQ so low in health. Geo coming in to essentially replace Super's role, playing that supportive role, the heartbeats, etc. Geo brings a ton of experience as an individual player, but he also brings this very stable foundation that Sonics can rely upon time and time again. When we speak of top tier teams in the world, we often talk about stuff like BDS. Why are they so strong? When again, really strong fundamentals and anchor positions from someone like Bride. When G2 was in their prime, they were also known for strong anchor players. When FaZe won the major, they had also, like, every single team who's basically found success of the history of Siege has had a really strong, consistent player that just always is there when something else goes bad. Geo has really been that player for Sonics on all three maps so far, whether it's bringing the Montium theme park, being one of the last members alive in Villa, even though they lost the map, and then now in the first two rounds, he's 4-0 and zero as a support anchor player, holding the bomb side, keeping that alive, finding kills, and just, you know, playing down the clock, essentially. And again, because he's so consistent and so reliable, it allows the other members that we see right now, Grixer and Rexen, to be overly aggressive, because even if they fall, the no Dio is there to pick them back up. Doc actually being played from Grixer, an upgrade that we have got, has gotten buffed in that mid-season patch. Haven't seen much play in a couple of years, but with that addition to the stims doing 120 HP or whatever, basically if one stim is full HP from injured, he's slowly starting to see more play at the tier one level. TSM with these operator bands, we can argue that it's not as easy to attack us as usual. It takes more time to open up these walls. But we are looking at a 3-3 split here from both teams. That's what they want, that's what they're aiming for. Snake looking for a lurk. And he gets it. A pick on to Gunner as he ascends the main stairs. The top floor bomb site for Sonics worked out before. They've now moved over to Cash and CCTV. Now with that entry though, are they aware that Grixer is still in similar position? Merc has been ineffective so far on this map. He struggled really hard on the first map as well. Grixer spotted, but he's in such a formidable spot and will be able to get himself back up to full HP Damn. in a hurry. Stop it up through the wall, but Grixer pulls it off. Sonics are getting so incredibly lucky on some of these engagements, but Grixer makes his own luck more often than not. Bolo tries to equalize, still at a disadvantage for TSM. They managed to dispatch those players from SQ that were playing off-site. Now they have to get into the bomb site. That is where it becomes a greater issue. There's a smoke on the board. Geo with three canisters in his back pocket. And in about 20 to 30 seconds can start to blanket the entrance points, causing issues for TSM. Not just that. I mean, Gash is alive. You have two Selma charges left. You have one impact from Rex who can stop an entry point for them on one of these two sides. The main goal right now seems to be to strike from multiple angles if you're TSM, but the thing is, it means isolation. Oh, Bolo knows where they might be. Kansen picks up two in a row. Sonic starting off Clubhouse. Three nothing. Oh boy. I said it, members, as we saw, they fell both to Kansen. He found both of those kills himself. Gerkser in the dock, I mean, that was no better time to be that operator. You're one HP instead of gym, you get the kill onto Snake. One stim, boop, back to full HP. You get the second kill because of it. And then, eventually, you die to Bolo, but it doesn't matter. The bomb site again from Sonics is fortified. Unlike TSM, they have two roamers and three members on site. If the roam falls, they have a backup plan. TSM on both Villa and Theme Park were committing four members to the roam. If the roam fell, so did the round. That is going to be that early tactical pause from TSM. And you and I, Parker, we questioned, did they take it too late on Theme Park? Should it have been taken earlier on try and get ahead of the problem? I like to see Pokemon calling it after round number three, especially given what is happening. It's not close rounds by any means. And things are just falling apart for them very early on. Individual members going for 1v1s. No support. 
the drone network not really stable. It takes a long time for TSM to get into the map to get the breaches opened up. Not familiar going their way. And it seems to be after these talks with Pojo, man, one thing seems to always be that common factor. And it's Gasher going from the more supportive role onto more of a flexibility role. The Ying right now being showcased for the Execute. Snake getting onto Nurk to creep around the map more successfully than an Ash. Merc getting off and hard breach of Maverick to get himself enabled on the map in those fights because Merc, he is that spearhead for TSM typically. And while he has had a tough time in this quarterfinal, putting him on Maverick where half the round is going to be painting a picture in a wall trying to open it up, it's not the ideal situation. And this is where some teams, they struggle on Clubhouse because you need a certain amount of operators that do a certain job, like hop reaching walls, but you don't necessarily have every single member of the team being flexible enough to successfully play those roles. And that's not just TSM. Most teams have that problem. That's why we have people who are locked into a support role. Some players are locked into an entry role. I like the fact that TSM are trying to change things up, especially now that we're halfway through their attacks. Something has to change. This could be the answer. Also, um, Capkins on the board. So let's <laughs> keep our ears and eyes peeled and keep the count up. Well, the Capkin back in round number one, if you recall, there was a Capkin trap that was activated. Bolo is that EDD magnet, as we've talked about, finding all of those five EDDs along the way. For those of you that might be returning to the game after Capkin's buffs, there have oh, been a lot of changes to him. There'll be a change to TSM as Bolo doesn't get to play the round at all. The Selmas have at least somewhat gone off, but Bolo is having a really rough start to this matchup. Focusing on him and the Capkin connection. Five <laughs> EDDs for Capkin. They're not fatal any longer, but you can attach multiple EDDs to the same doorway. So if you've got five, you can still cover three doorways, but you just put two on two separate doorways and then a single trap on the other. Without Bolo and Merc on zero kills, TSM's two main weapons mm. are at the moment quite quiet. Gives Sonics very similar to what we saw in back in round number one. Time to get into the bomb site from the Roamers who held so valiantly for the first 90 seconds. And now they can consolidate with all five down below and anchor up without that ace on the board. The only other hard breach comes in the secondary gadget in the hands of Gasher, and there's one more to go. That means that you're going to be able to open up two hatches. That's about it. That's not a great position for TSM to be in, irrespective of the numbers that they have. I also think a Chief just ran through a Capcom Trap and stock door, trying to rotate to get, to get that diffuser because Bola lost it earlier. He's so on HP. It's a dance with the verticality on the floor, an impact grenade, a possible C4. And he thinks, you know what? I can't actually do this. Let's go main stairs instead because Merc, he's opened up that church triple wall. It looked like when Grixer went back to the bomb site, Eat it was nade. over by towards blue. Achieve nades in. Snake follows up onto Gunner, but now they've got that attention. Is that a nade that gets tossed out? It might do some damage. A second kill for Snake. EDD claims one from TSM, a 2v2, but SQ ends up with the upper hand, leaving Gasher alone. He's still got two Candelas, and there he goes, but nobody's going to swing on him. He misses out on the Capkin of Grixer. Suppressed weapon inside a church. The telltale pitter-patter. But Gasher will now have to relocate. Does he go for the engagement? He tries to get the Diffuser. Rexon denies him that. Sonics have taken four rounds so far. They are storming their way through this third map. They are, and Rexon is the front runner of that because he got that opening kill onto Bolo. Again, targeting the isolated members of TSM to gain an advantage. Then, Sonics, they slow things down. They just play the lead, let TSM do all those typical things. The verticality, running around the map, picking up the diffuser, droning every single inch of the map for the roam clear. And then when the execute comes through, that's when they strike again. When that first Candela from Gasher went out into the air, that's when Rexon goes in the offensive. And he swings out, gets a kill, does damage onto the second member. And achieved short, he found an opening with a perfectly cooked grenade, but there's no real follow-up. The plant does not go down. That means that we have no stable ground to stand on and things very quickly, they change. It was played beautifully by TSM. They even came in through blue. They had every single angle and area covered as they should, but it did not get the result that they needed, not that they wanted. It's two rounds out of four now, where they, they were very close to our victory, but it got snatched away at that final second. The Sonics are looking very dominant on Clubhouse so far. 
Attackers are moving Snake has really been the only player of TSM to show up so far. Yep. And he's not doing it in that primary engagement role either. A lot of Snake's kills have been these flex, almost rat-like plays yes. coming in on a late flank, which are actually quite impactless in the grand scheme of things. Because while it's important that you have somebody who's not connected to the main push pick up these kills, your main points of entry are all failing. None of your players are getting those kills you need. Merc, zero kills. Bolo, one kill. Achieved, three. Okay, not terrible. But still, there's work to be done here for TSM. Sonics have been masterful so far on defense. And with four rounds in a row on defense, they have won this first half. Now, an early pick could spell trouble for TSM. Snake engaging in about a second or two on those red stairs, but backs off for now. Hard breach going out. Rexon is yet to die in this matchup. That is also something to focus on. He's the only player without a death to his name. And I cast him. <laughs> My apologies, Rexon. I'll take that one. Teams trade back and forth. TSM coming out ahead with Merc on the top of red stairs, picking up two quick kills. Cash and CCTV have been for the taking for TSM for about 20 seconds. They grab them, but now to transition over towards the gym and bedroom component. Diffuser in the hands of Gasher. Can he be escorted in? Merc really showing up with that double kill, and that's gotta feel good on his side because that's the Merc, that, like, that's how Merc plays when he plays his best. With confidence, storming in through a door, and just taking a gunfight with a drone. And it pays off to great effect, but now TSM, they've had this lead before on gym attack, and they threw it the last time around. TSM have eight drones at their disposal, and over a minute to go. There's no real good reason that Merc is being so cautious by that logistic oh. wall. They haven't been able to find the off-site players. Where is the intel here from TSM? Sonics are punishing them perfectly because of it. Gunner with that pick to equalize numbers, playing down below, and now TSM realized that as the time has continued to tick away. There's somebody unaccounted for, not on the bomb site. That's a troubling situation to be in. There are also frost mats on the board. So the more that this clock continues to work against TSM, they're gonna be put in a spot where the time is ultimately what costs them the round. But hey, the guns are hitting their marks. Geo will need to clutch out. He did so before. If there's any operator that can pull it off, it's the maestro. Gasher on low HP. Diffuser in the hands of Bolo. Gasher's been picked back up. Geo doesn't have a ton of intel. He'll play this shrewd angle, dragging oh, across. He is Bolo and the Diffuser as well. Geo needs to play keep away for 10 seconds. They've got intel inside of the bomb site. Gasher taking matters into his own hands, but he's by a soft wall. And it's happening in a position where the evil eye can get the job done. Revenge is a dish best served cold, but it's the hot hand of Geo punishing his former team. 5 nothing for Sonics. I praised him. A consistent, strong performer, an anchor for Sonics, always last alive, and he rarely loses those. I mean, he played the 1v2 perfectly. Top of main stairs, you can either go right and go towards gym hallway, you're safe over there. You walk down the main staircase in case you find that initial kill, which he did, and play time. And to make things even worse for Gasher, it was him who survived with 20 HP, he was injured in construction, and that evil eye behind the television inside a master bedroom, it could see him, so they had information, they had the red ping, and they got the saps to go along with those. It's the worst way to go out because you cannot fight back. And Gasher couldn't even get off the defuse because it's zero seconds at that point. You had no choice but to stick it and pray for something that could not happen, that somehow you survive. TSM, they had the advantage, they had the numbers, they tossed it away. Parker, you made a great point. Information not really being there for them. If you've cleared half the map and only two drones have died, one of those being in the prep phase of all things, where are your drones going? Because they're not going near any enemy members from Sonics. So you don't know where they are. And as the defenders, they have map control. You need to take that away from them by taking one air of the map at a time, go for a lurk around like we saw Snake do earlier, and again, TSM's lineup, it's different people playing different operators because nothing is working. Now Gasher's on Maverick, Snake is now the ace player to enable Bolo on the Sophia, but Bolo's 1-5, and, and Gasher's 1-5, and, and Merc is finally on the scoreboard, but only with those two kills in the previous round. So we're really just trying to throw something at the one hope it sticks. Awesome. Can 
lands it on top of Garage Rafters. Ooh. Takes down Gasher, one and six Going in up. the first half. Bola, one and five. Merc, two and five. TSM are getting battered around like a ship in a storm. And boy, oh boy, they are on the verge of capsizing. Timeout's already been taken, too. Yes. There's nothing that TSM can do. All at this point you can hope for as TSM is the side swap gives you some form of second life. Because right now, Sonics are crushing you on the roam. Yep. You're, they're not even beating you on the Intel game. I mean, they are, but not necessarily because of how well they're playing, but because TSM aren't playing up to snuff, and then Sonics are pummeling them because of yep. it. Look at this, dry peeking. Gunner walks away with it. It's another kill for SQ. Finally, TSM can end his reign of terror. Searching for their very first round here in a do or die map. Winner of Clubhouse moves on to the semis to play up against BDS tomorrow. And right now, if you're a betting person, your money has to be on Sonics. It has to be. I mean, they look dominant and better in every single way right now, especially on Clubhouse. Things have slowly slipped away for TSM, starting on theme and really snowballed here in the final map. TSM needs this round to then have a chance when the side draw comes on because if you go 6-0 on your side, you can make zero mistakes in defense and you're always going to make a mistake. And all Sonic's got to do is capitalize one time in six rounds. That is not hard to achieve. Some of Cash opened up, leading in from construction. Snake on that position. The toxic canisters go out in front of his very eyes. Geo's expended all of them, though, so for the final 30 seconds, oh. nothing to deny you entry through these doorways. You just need to wait for the rest of that gas to linger. Nade goes out, blows up Kansan. Numbers are equal. It's a good shout for TSM. And while some of these rounds have been absolute blowouts, this is an opportunity for TSM. Will they let it slip through oh. their fingers? Geo with seven kills. Sonics still adding to that tally. Down goes Bolo, achieved in this position. He's last man standing. And again, it's Geo. Geo, Geo, Geo. A perfect first half. And it's match point series point for Sonics. All right. If you're TSM, you better have some nasty defensive setups, some confidence-filled players, because right now you have nothing to lose. I mean, if you lose this round, it's over. So you can play like it doesn't matter at all because you got to bring out every single trick in the book and more just for a chance to go to overtime and then still win two of the following three rounds. Season they're gonna go basement. I mean, I was gonna look at the numbers and say like, oh, is this the better bomb side for Sonics? Well, but Sonics won all six in a row across the entirety of the map, with the exception of Bar. They did not go there with the Thermite and Ibana both being taken off the board. CCTV has seen play and it has seen success. Something that is quite rare. Oh no 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 no! no, 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 no. Oh, Tio, 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 Tio. Listen, we can't do this at TSM, right? The terror of theme park. He's back. <laughs> TSM struggling to deal with that Montane round after round after round. And guess what? Sonics are going to bring it again. I was curious going into the operator bands if TSM would target ban the Monty. But given that TSM started on attack, I mean, they were accounting to rank up some rounds and not be in this position. So maybe the Monty wouldn't matter as much. And Sonics, I mean, they can play things super aggressive. They can play things safe. They're going to go through dirt in a basement roam. Oh, game this is a quick one. Snake kill. Absolutely flattened by Gunner and TSM. They're out. They're in. <laughs> and they're out. It's a magical disappearing act. Sonics get the target that they want. It did cost them quite a lot of HP from mm. both Gunner and Kanzen. But they get a pick. Bolo's taken some damage as well. But he's in this prime position. There wasn't much left to Gunner. So single shot from the AUG in the hands of Wamai is good enough. 4v4. But oh, Sonics are just no. so confident. No. Attacking downstairs, TSM's attention was towards that dirt tunnel. As they escaped, they got caught. Rexon, the best rated player in the Sonics, in the groups, showing the worth and the value that he has. Guess who's taking up space inside a dirt tunnel? It's the Montane. Mm -hmm. Rexon's found by Bolo, still on the roam on the main floor. Finds his way back downstairs to blue. The Monty knocking at your doors, but the Montane's value decreases 
the more of your team dies. Yes. So right now, Kansan and Grixer are really the only two active combatants for Sonics when this engagement happens. Chiu also has the diffuser, so the goal is going to be to shepherd him in, mm -hmm. get that diffuser planted. You've still got, historically, two very good guns on TSM, and even if Bolo isn't exactly having the best series at the moment, he can still do some serious damage. You gotta clear out the post right outside the kitchen. They know the C4 is there, so Kansen has to come to kitchen, or Grixa has to use those preaching charges to eliminate a chief. Once the chief is down, that's when Munchie can walk in from dirt and start planting that diffuser with cover from the hatch. It's all unachieved. Has the C4, throws it, it gets hurt. You tossed, run away. It was tossed a little bit too short, it looked like, as it was. well. So even if you hadn't had SQ get out of the way, I don't know if it would have been successful. But Achieve doesn't really have any pressure from the attackers. There's no drones on him right now. There's oh. no soft destruction that's happening. Kansan eliminates Bolo. Things falling apart. TSM, could we see the first 7-0 happen to them? Oh. Achieved wants to make it happen, but now it's down oh. to Grixer, and TSM denies a 7-0. Oh, they get on the board, but things are so dire. TSM must be perfect on this second half as Sonics were in the first. That is quite, quite a hill to climb. But if a comeback is going to happen, it's got to start with this first round and TSM at least have made it work, even if it was by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, the first of possibly many, possibly the only, and it all was on to achieve there, playing below the kitchen hatch. Defended Sonics did not box. capitalize correctly by my standards. I mean, you rotate over the sledge, you do the verticality, you force him out, then you can actually approach that round rather simply, as there is no Toxic Babes, there is no Yokai, no Maestro, nothing of the kind, no real plant and I. TSC needs all the chance they can get because they gotta go round by round. It is a tough start to the defensive half, but they made it work. It's gonna be a gym, secondary bomb set option here. No room for error, no room for mistakes. Bandit being brought to the occasion. You know how to trick the CCTV side and deny the initial breach, or stay on the jacuzzi side and keep that cozy and locked down. Of course, Merc on the frost for those window jump ins on the bomb set itself, bringing the deployable shield and secondary shotgun. Incredibly high value operator for this particular bomb site. And Geo is going to keep doing the same thing, and eventually it has to work, right? Monty again, eight kills to his name. Geo, tied top fragger for Sonics. Has those secondary EMPs because it could be Rexon and Gunner leading the charge in the hot breach role. This also means you don't need the Thatcher. The secondary EMPs gives you more flexibility on your attacking lineup. You should free up one role, one operator. And Sonics, I think they're going to take that same approach. Try and jab somewhere, get a reaction from TSM, and take things slow. The only thing Sonics kind of failed at in the previous round was that they were playing at two different paces. Two members playing aggressive, and then you had Geo on the supportive cast playing rather passive and, and, and far back. So if we get on the same page like we did on Theme Park for the Sonics attack, that's when TSM are going to be in trouble. They have no real Monty counters. Bandit only C4, no smoke, no echo. Same story as Theme Park, Geo can get so much value with almost no effort. General viewers seem to get quite unhappy when we use the term abuse to describe an operator. <laughs> but this is Sonic's absolutely abusing Montaigne right yes, now. Yes, I mean, 100%. Not because of Monty as an operator, but because TSM can't seem to deal with it. Yes. And you have realized that there is a very significant weakness that TSM has. Their Achilles heel. Oh. And you're going to continue to abuse what works against them. And look at this, Bolo being hounded by the Montaigne. But there's great trepidation here. Bolo is still a threat at all times, and this is exactly why. Swiftly removing cans and gunner drops as well. Grixer on the entry from down in stock. Tries to keep those numbers close. Geo is still in play, but as we said in the previous round, the fewer teammates around you, the less power that a Montaigne has. Geo has shown that he can make magic work with this operator even when the odds Attackers are stacked against him. But it didn't work last round. And there were the last round of theme park. If oh, I recall no. no. correctly, <laughs> it didn't work either. Grixer laughs it off. Yeah. That's excellent. Could you imagine if that had been TSM? Doing exactly. That? There would have been no laughter there. Oh. No, you're allowed those mistakes right now because you got such a big lead. Sonics, I mean, their own clinician didn't work out, but the catch on the rotation worked greatly for them. 
Now Dio will lead the charge in. No smoke in it in pocket, keep that in mind. They have to brute force this with no line, line cover. They see what they can make work. There goes the frost map by the window. It allows for a hop in towards weight room, gym, whichever you'd like to call it. Sonics have realized that the problem lies over towards logistics. And now Geo will go for the plan. Achieved is there to greet him. SQ comes out ahead in that engagement, though. It's Snake and Achieved to just try to ride this out. SQ need to get in and do some serious damage, and they won't do that. TSM now streaking on their own. Two in a row in every single round that TSM wins is a few pounds of weight off of their shoulders and onto the shoulders of Sonics. The crowd that's here is trying their best to get TSM into this matchup. And it seems like, at least for these two rounds, it's working. Yeah, so far. I mean, the last 20 seconds of any of these defensive rounds from TSM you gotta be holding your breath. It comes down to a one versus one, a two versus two, a two versus one, etc. And it's anyone's round for the taking. Sonics, again, one tiny mistake costing that three versus three. The gym window was still cancelled by TSM. Therefore, the bump cover wasn't there for Geo. That eventually was why he fell. You need one member to plant and two people to cover various angles. So Geo had to be the one planted because he's the Monty. His gun doesn't really work for a plant cover, just being that pistol. And TSM one round at a time, slowly making their way there. Of course, Achieve leading the charge, 12 kills to his name. He is forced once again onto that bandit operator. The great thing about this bandit is that you don't have to do an active duty when it comes to tricking necessarily. You can put them down like he is right now and free yourself up to be a roaming gun with a C4 while still applying value to the team by having those bandit charges placed down. The Dokebi from Geo now, off the Monty, is in play. TSM have banned Dokebi in more than half their games at this major throughout group stage. They clearly do not like when teams bring this operator, and now it's on the board. Kansen, <laughs> there it is. Geo, at this point, might just be trying to bother TSM, right? You bring the Monty, you bring the Dokebi. And Geo hasn't had much, much action to the scoreboard on the attack inside as of yet. He's still on eight kills. And Garner takes out Gasher, who's already in a bad position, punished for it. The first time that we've seen this bar stage bomb site emerge in this matchup. In terms of win rate, it's pretty dead even. Oh. But Sonics are trying to break it in their favor. Achieved in Gasher are no more, and that's bad news for TSM. They have notoriously struggled to get kills, but the one consistency for them has been achieved deep in the clutch and on entry kills as well. He'll be no more. The yokais that still exist will just be there for information. They won't be active outside of that. And there is at least one yokai still up at this point. So that's some very valuable intel for TSM. Sonics are on the hunt to take out Bolo. They know where he is, and he's isolated at this point. Damaged, greatly damaged by Kanzen. And now it's Rexin to get in on it too. TSM just down to two players. This is their entire playoffs in front of their eyes. They're about to lose Snake, but no, he prevails in that battle against Kanzen. They've got so much work to be done. Time on their side as well. But Sonics have so much runway to land this thing. They have. And it's a heartbreak. We would have got your TSM. I mean, slowly but steadily, you're losing members. You're losing health. And Snake gets a kill for half his HP bar. You can't keep making those trades because you only have two members left standing. Merc has to be the hero here to live with Snake. There's the logic bombs that go off. You talked about annoyance. You talked about getting under the skin. Geo, the former teammate, looking for revenge against the team that dropped him just before the start of the stage. If there's anybody who has insider knowledge and intimate knowledge of what irritates TSM, it would be him. And there goes another logic bomb. Oh, they know Sonics are aware. Gunner waits for the pop-up. Geo walks in, diffuser in hand. There goes flashes. Geo tries to trade what? out. Merc actually prevails in that gunfight. But Gunner has the insurance policy. Snake, one of the newest members, takes down Geo, but he doesn't get Rexon. Sonics pummel TSM in the third map. And they're going to the semis tomorrow with TSM eliminated. The final four teams here in Yonsherping will all search for their first international major championship.
and we will have a new champion. I mean, the competition right now in Rainbow Six Siege is at its highest. We're seeing new teams coming off, new players joining older teams to revive them again. And it works for every region, seemingly so. And that's why, as Parker said, we're gonna get a new champion for these major events. The Sonics, they're proving a point and sending a statement that the changes that they made were for the better and are showing up in great form. Wow, this could be another opportunity for Geo to add a trophy to his trophy case. He's a world champion. Yes. He won it with TSM here in Sweden to start off the year, and there is still hope for him to win more than one. Everybody else, though, they're going to be searching for a victory for the first time. Tomorrow, the matchups are locked in. We know that on the one side of the bracket, Liquid and W7M will continue to fight for Brazilian supremacy. Oh. And Brazil was guaranteed a team in the grand finals as all four teams ended up on the same side of the bracket. But for NA and EU, Sonics will collide with BDS in a must-watch match. And you and I aren't going to be casting that, so I'm going to be sitting in the audience taking every single moment of BDS versus SQ in as best as I can. What a performance from Sonics. It didn't certainly seem like they were going to be able to keep up with TSM after map number one. No. But by shocking us and pulling out a map that they hadn't played before in Theme Park and then winning the most played map here in Yonshirping in very dominant fashion, well, it's put the other three teams on notice. And if you're BDS... You got some prep work to be done because what else are the Sonics hiding? Exactly. I mean, going up 6 and 0 on Clubhouse to start things off, almost looking like the first 7 0 of the entire tournament in the quarters on third map is almost unheard of. And Sonics, they're here to play, and they showed us in that matchup exactly how good they can be. A 7 0 over the defending world champions in a must win third match would have been an absolute statement. But either way, even if it was 7 2, Sonics still sending a statement. And we get to hear from them down on the stage as we toss to Ian for the interview. Okay, thank you very much. Of course, it can only be one man standing on the stage with me, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Gio, please. Now, as I was waiting to interview you, your entire team were very vocal. I was watching you. You were cool, calm, and collected. Did that feel like a little bit of revenge for you or not? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm just old. For me, I was like, I don't really... There's no rivalry, at least for me. I think I ended good terms with TSM. So for me, it's just hoping to make it farther in the tournament. So there's no bad blood or anything. I'm just, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> you seem very chilled. And, and uh, that's a, a very cool demeanor that you've got about you. That being said, you know, you did win SI with that team um, at the start of this year. What is the passion, passion and the burning desire, despite you being very relaxed, to win a major here with this roster? I mean, I think it's just about showing I can still do it. Like I keep saying, while I am old, I still think I can play for a bit. So being able to play, do it with these guys that believed in me is just amazing. And then uh, we're a brand new team. I think we have a lot to work on, and I think it shows. But uh, we're just here to have a good time and think, think I guess, yeah, it's yeah. working, right? For sure. It definitely is. Did it, did it feel like you had a little bit of inside knowledge coming up against these guys? Um... I would say, yeah, just because I kind of know how like, some of the players play. But I mean, at the end of the day, like they're world-class players too. So it's, we just got to play our game and uh, see how it goes. So Gunnar, I saw him very loud, very proud to, to get that victory there. This is his first time on a, on a big stage like this. Is it partly your job as a veteran here to make sure you maintain a, a little bit of grounding there, keep that foundation tight so he doesn't maybe get a little bit too active? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think it for the whole team, this is like the first time in a major playoff. So I think, like I say, we're, we're a brand new team, basically. So we're just here learning, having a good time, and just seeing how far we go and just working on the process. So BDS up next. Did you catch any of them in action? And did you see them much throughout the group stages? What do you make of them of, as uh, opposition in the semifinals? I mean, I think BDS is a great team. I thought Wolves was a great team too. Obviously, unlucky they lost. But I mean, we're here to play whoever it is, whether it's an NA brothers or EU, hopefully, hopefully we see Brazil in the finals and we'll see what happens. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, what does, we, we touched on it earlier about what it means to you about, you know, you've still got it. What is the driving force within you as a player? As you keep saying that you're old, obviously I don't think anybody here necessarily wants to see you retire or uh, hang up the boots if you, as you would uh, anytime soon. But what is it that makes you want to continue playing Siege? Honestly, I just think, I, I think the whole like leaving TSM was probably like lit the fire under me. I think I got kind of complacent on TSM. So I think just like getting off that team kind of just made me like, want to go out there and do it again instead of just being like, oh, I mean, I'm a pro. Let me just keep yeah. doing what I'm doing. So, I mean, I think that really helped. And I think the fire's back and we got to see how far we can go. It's burning bright. Any last words for your fans watching here in the audience and at home? Uh, just thank you to everyone that came out. Love you guys. Love my wife. Love everyone. Uh, saludos a toda la banda. Gracias por apoyar y los quiero mucho. Thank you very much, Gio. Thank you, guys. Congratulations, of course, and commiserations to TSM. We're going to throw to a brief break, but when we come back, we will have all of the reaction. We will pick that quarterfinal apart on our desk with Milos and the gang. And welcome to Operation Solar Raid. This season, we're introducing another new squad. It's Ghost Eyes, led by Kavera, and a newcomer, Solus, is joining the team as well. Here's a glimpse of your new operator in action on the new Night Haven Labs map. Solus joins the defenders with an electronics detecting augmented reality headset that allows her to not just spot attacker gadgets in action, but also reveal them to her teammates. A question arose, well, what if we have an IQ on defense? You see that there's a lot of electronic gadgets. You have breaching charges, you have claymores, and uh, tons and tons of drones and cameras. So it just made sense that the defense would have a tool similar to what the attackers have. Night Haven Labs. It's an imposing research base, and it's the new map coming in Operation Solar Ray. The whole map is very, very clean. Even the outside, it has a very corporate feel. On one of the roofs, there's a risk versus reward run out to reinforce a hatch. Otherwise, it opens up some pretty interesting lines of sight. The map looks superb. The artists, the lighters, everyone did such a great job on this map. I'm looking forward to the reception. Crossplay and cross progression. We know you've been waiting for this feature for a long time, and it's coming this season. This is thanks to a data migration that's happening with the season launch. So the first time you log in, you'll see a pop-up that lets you know all of your data now lives in the cloud and is accessible from any platform anytime. Fighting toxicity and improving our anti-cheat measures are an ongoing priority for us. We are very happy to announce that we will be launching the new reputation system. We want to move away from the toxicity that the people are facing, and we want to improve the gameplay experience and provide a safer place for everybody. It is now time for you to shine in Ranked 2.0. What are the changes in the core system? We are splitting skill and rank into two different values. The skill in one hand will be hidden and only used for matchmaking. On the other hand, the rank will be visible and only used for progressing. From now on, there will be one reward per division. So, five rewards per rank, with some exclusive new items. If you finish one season in Gold 5, you will get as well the rewards from Silver 1, Silver 2, Bronze and Copper. Now it's time to talk Battle Pass. Operation Solar Raid is introducing a brand new progression system. Rainbow Six Siege Battle Pass has evolved to become more tactical, offering you new ways to unlock the rewards that matter to you faster. Finally, you can play Operation Solar Raid on the season test server this week. Have fun. And be sure to share your feedback on r 6 desk of this first play day in the playoffs and it all 
continues here with us. I'm Elos Dominic, your host. With me are Anne and Alphama. We're going to break it down. Seems like Sonic's Alphama have done it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I called it, right? I thought they had what it took to, uh, to, to upset TSM and go and win the two last maps. I think, um, especially on the clubhouse, it, they look so dominant, right? They were able to turn man advantage, uh, the man disadvantage situation to a man advantage situation. I mean, I, I remember this. There's a round, they're 5v3, turns into a 1v3. Like, mm -hmm. they were so consistently good, and they were able to aggress together, whether it be on a ro for the roamers on an extended hold or for the anchors together on a passive defense. All the time, everything was just working. For me, it feels like the teams have done a little bit of a switcheroo from the first map until the last map. It feels like in this map specifically, um, it was Sonics that was more confident, and it was TSM that maybe was a little bit more unaware or uncohesive and didn't really play together as a team. That's what we really asked for them, uh, from them rather, coming into this third map. But there were rounds where they were going for a cash execute. It seemed that the plan of the main bridge didn't work. They planned to have players coming from construction, and then Bolo was out outside of Garage Store with a Diffuser by himself, contesting the person on Raptors, which is a very tricky gunfight to contest. It A, didn't work. B, they didn't have a chance to jump into the windows or go through the construction breach. It seemed like they were a little lost at times. Very unfortunate coming out for uh, TSM. And sometimes there were flanks from Sonics as well that really caught the players at TSM off guard. Yeah, I think if, if you ever need a, a TS, um, Clubhouse Masterclass in terms of, of defense, I think you, you watch Sonic's defenses. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing to see how they're playing together. I mean, even in a situation where TSM did everything right, gained all the control, they're in a 3v3, they're playing it the best way they can, but Sonic's consistently got the better hand of the trades because of their positions, because of rehearsed strats again and again and again, and this is why it's five wins in a row on Clubhouse. There you go, Rexen putting uh, numbers up top, Grixer also on the team, but pretty well spread out for the Sonics. Personally, it looked a bit more top-heavy for TSM. Trying to bring it back at some point, we're thinking this could be the first 7-0 of the tournament until TSM were able to claw two rounds, but like Intero was saying in the cast, you have to be perfect every single round, six in a row to even hope for that OT. I like to say the really high cost on Rexon as well. It's almost 89%. And despite these players being very risky in that opening part of the round, there were rounds where there were multiple players on the side of Sonic Spawn Peak. Not just one, but two different opportunities, two different angles or windows that they were peeking from. And there was also a round where they went for a dirt push with the two of them. Like you mentioned, you put yourself up for a 2v1 instead of a 1v1. They got the player out of dirt and then they just run away. It's like the confidence, oh, we've cleared this. We don't need this kind of control. They eventually use it to push it and failed. But the initial confidence of, oh, we cleared this, and now we can continue with our plan, looked very good from Sonics. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, like, like I said before, even when they had not the man advantage, they were able to clutch. Like, everything was clicking. Even, even when Kenzen is looking for that opening pick, he will bang someone, and then they hit a headshot through the wall. Like, it just felt like everything was clicking. Then how does the Sonic fare against BDS, their next opponent? Well, I think, first thing, if they even go to, to Theme Park again, they're going to have to learn how to attack without the Monty. That's for sure. Oh, yes. So first thing also, that they're not going to be able to throw as many curveballs as they've shown two new maps that they've never showed before. So it, there is fresh analysis to be done by BDS right now. Now, BDS are able to control the pace by being super aggressive, Sonics is able to do it in defense, especially with Rexen, but I think in general, they're more step-by-step -step team. That may have changed with Geo coming in and being able to adapt a lot, but in general, I feel like BDS would have more control on the pacing. So, I'm, 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 honestly, I'm not sure. It's for both teams right now. Rookies are in. Who's the best team? We'll see. It took a little bit longer for Sonics, I guess, to really wake up into this match. The mm -hmm. first map, they seemed a little unaware. It was one of those newer maps that they weren't that comfortable on. And then they started waking up. Um, I'm not sure if you can allow yourself to do that against BDS, though, when they come guns fire blazing into the matchup, whether you can allow yourself to have a little bit of a slower start. All right. Who do you think is our MVP for this game? If I look at the cost stats... It has to be Rex. It's right? the entire yeah. match, right? Yeah. There well, you go. Let's bring it up on the screen. Let's resolve this issue. Who's the MVP? Oh, it's Kenzen. Kenzen, okay. there it is. 29 to 20 for first kills, so opening kills, and two clutches slash plants in the game. 
that's maybe not something you see too often. Someone that goes for plants also gets like opening kills, or, or like you know, a clutch yeah. can also happen. So at the same time, of course, but opening kills and someone who eventually goes for the plant isn't always on the same player. But it shows their versatility and it shows that the players can adapt, which I really like to see. What about that Malusi? I mean, that's that's his crutch. He's just using it on his hollow sites. And I remember like I had fun with him before because he he would always go for this uh, times one sites mm -hmm. all the time, even if he had better ones. So I, I don't um, I don't actually think that Kenzen is only a support player because that's what we recruited him. He's developed into much more now. I think he's super versatile, and the new lineup just offers him more opportunities to do more and and have a bigger pool of operators. All right, then le let's summarize things for today. We had four matches. Here's what a bracket looks like at the end of this first day of playoffs, of course. We came in with 16 teams in Stockholm. Now we're down to eight. And actually, by the end of today, we only have four left. We started off with W7M versus Black Dragons. W7M, more experienced among the young gunners of both of these teams. They're able to move through. Liquid taking down FaZe Clan, beautiful fashion. Liquid cementing themselves as Probably number one in the Brazil, but that's the challenge for tomorrow. Should they beat W7M, then I think it would be no contest. But these two teams are always neck and neck if you're watching the BR6 region. Sonics defeating TSM, we just saw that. But earlier, Wolves fell to BDS 7475, a close EU v EU. BDS usually wins those against their opponents, unless it's the French finals. That's usually how it goes, the rule between them. But that's what we got. And tomorrow, that is what we have for you. So let's fill you in on the schedule so you can prepare yourselves for two best of three series, starting off a bit later than what we had today at 16.30 CET here, local time in Yunchirping, which is the same as everywhere else in the EU, or at least West EU, not accounting for the UK. That's another world at this, at this point. 7.30, and that'll be for Sonics versus BDS. Very much looking forward to that. You start off with all Brazil again. Yeah, and I feel like it, it's kind of a bit early to say this, but I feel like the lower end of the bracket, so the two Brazilian teams, mm -hmm. are not at all at the same stage of a, a, a team maturing or a team life or a team cycle. I think they're way more ready and to, to win a title than the two above. I think for both EU and NA, these two teams have made recent research changes where I feel like W7M and Liquid are just ready to win a title right now. Mm -hmm. So whoever wins that semi-final would be the favorite for me. W7M should be the favorite. Oh, okay. I'm just happy because when I predicted the final, I predicted BDS versus W7M, and it's still possible. I'm not trying to actually 50 50 jinx. chance. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Nice. I'm not trying to jinx any teams into it, but it would be really nice to see my predictions come through. Yeah. So if I were to select the complete opposite, that will be the one to come through. I probably jinxed them now. Didn't yeah, I? probably. Anyways, thank you very much, Alfama and Anne. I hope you had a good day for yourself today. Uh, Alfama, how do you feel? I mean, I feel I, I feel like it, it was a super interesting day. Lots of interesting matchups. All about rivalries. First day here, lots of excitement. I, I had a lot of fun. Thank you guys for inviting me. Thank you. And uh, we'll see each other tomorrow, right? D don't thank us. We're not the ones making it. Th thank you to the Ubi crew in the back that makes these decisions. But Anne, your first major. I mean, you've done an SI at this point, you know, but, <laughs> you know, first major, how you feel? I'm feeling really good. It was a good day, good matchups, maybe some very fast ones, faster than we probably expected. But if it gives a good omen for the upcoming matches, then I'm down for it for sure. Yeah, I'd love to hear from Fresh, but he's not here, so... <laughs> Oh well. Anyways, thank you guys very much, and I hope you guys watching at home had fun with us today here in Yunchirping. We'll be back tomorrow, like we said, 16.30 is the beginning of our match, and for those that are in NA, that's 10.30 a.m. for you, so it's a good time to sit back. You know, you watch Saturday morning cartoons, it's Saturday morning Siege, which is perfect, so get your breakfast ready for it if you're watching in North America. Though, till then, we will see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. We love you so much. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.